Hey, this is Chase Sexton. You're listening to the Moto X Pod Show. What's up, you guys? Jeremy McGrath here. You are listening to Moto X Pod Show. We're four days away from the very first super motocross race in history, and it's simply, simply an exciting time in the sport, eh? We'll get into some predictions on that and also talking to a bunch of Canucks tonight about the Canadian Series. Scotty, it's going to be a lot of fun. They recently wrapped up their MXD, uh, their Canadian Series, and they've announced their MXDN team. So we're going to have all the members of the MXDN team on tonight. Dylan Wright. Actually, that's going to be a pre-record, guys, but we're going to stick. If you're on YouTube, we're going to stick on the line. Um, Scotty and I will be on YouTube chatting with you guys while we play that, so that's a pre-record later on. But then Jess Pettis and Ryder McNabb are all going to join tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but this is the Moto, uh, the Moto X Pod Show brought to you by Vital MX, presented by Race Tech and Boyson. And I first want to introduce my co-host over here. Um, he's a he's a hoser. You know what that is? Yeah. You know what a hoser is? A- am I? Is that, is that what I am? Galdi probably tells. I'm trying to throw in all these little Canadian yeah. terms. I, I didn't yeah. notice so Yeah, far. you didn't notice? Yeah. You didn't notice, eh? Hey, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking Sitting about? Sitting across from me, Scotty <laughs> Thompson, working the cameras. What's up, man? Uh, not much, man. I just I did a crash course on uh, Canadian motocross today. I did uh, watched all the highlights from the whole season. And well, I hope I you feel, know what you're talking about. I, I hope I do, eh? <laughs> well, next up, from the great white north, he's probably drinking a Labatt's Blue and eating some Hawkins cheesies. Guaranteed MX. Ryan Galdi. What's up, Ryan Galdi? Nobody drinks Labatt's Blue, and I think <laughs> Steve Mathis is the only one that ever eats Hawkins cheesies as well. So uh, I'm letting you down to start the show, Dark Side. All That's right. What, what, about some, <laughs> what about some poutine? Is it poutine or poutine? Uh, poutine would poutine. be uh, it's a, a French. That's more in Quebec there as well. You guys are definitely not on your geographical Damn. assignments here to start this off, but that's okay. <laughs> poutine is delicious, and everybody should try it. I've had it's it. Not it's great good. for your it's not great for your heart or any sort of uh, <laughs> exercising stuff like that, but it tastes really good. I think I need Michael Lindsay to send me to the Canadian motocross series next year so I could get acclimated to the Canadian, the proper terms and the slang. Uh, there's lots out there. We talk a lot of smack, talk a lot of shit. And, and to be honest with you, we have a boatload of fun because I mean, seriously, who's really making it in the sport boys. I mean, it's not America. Only Americans make money riding dirt bikes, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. I hope Dylan Wright's <laughs> making some money, a five-time champion. I mean, that's, yeah, I hope he's making, making a few bucks, but we're going to get into all that. This is the Boyson open discussion. Galdi, uh, would you, how would you like yearly discounts and a chance to develop new products for a company like Boyson? Buds, I'm cheap as hell. We're, I ride dirt bikes. I would love a deal. <laughs> Well, all you got to do is go to boyson.com and apply for their factory racing's rider support program and get in on that. And they may ask you to help develop products and you'll get yearly discounts. So do that when we get off the phone. All right, cool. And as uh, I, if I say that I raced DAG back in the day, does that give me even more? I would assume. Why, why would it not? Okay. Do you know who DAG Boyson is? Yes, I do. Okay, good. You better know that. He's one of your sponsors, so you better know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get into a lot of stuff uh, with you in this first 30 minutes before we get Jess Patterson on. As I said, the Canadian series wrapped up. Dylan Wright once again dominates the 450 class. And I know you've talked about this on some of your own pods and stuff with the, the Canadian review you did with Steve Mathis, but... I asked him when I entered, well, I don't want to give that away. We won't give that away. Do you think, how long do you think he sticks in Canada and just keeps dominating? I mean, at some point, I feel like he's going to get bored. Um, well, I mean, that's a question that's been around for, well, I guess five years. Uh, he's been on a hell of a streak right now. Um, domination has been the word. 19 overalls in a row going all the way back to 2021. So, um, but I think it's, it's the, the answer is actually a lot simpler than most would think. As a fan, you want to see him, you know, travel the world and do these things. But you got a job. You got bills to pay. He's married now. Uh, I'm sure you, when you interviewed him today, he was talking somewhere in Greece because that's where he is uh, on his um, uh, anniversary trip. And, like, he's, you know, 26, going to be 27 next year. You don't just, like, sort of try to rewrite your career, if you will. And then, of course, 
yeah, he can get bikes and equipment and, and all that stuff for free and, and, and good stuff to go to the States or go to the GPs. But he's going to have to, like, throw a, a crazy investment in himself to do it. I think if it was where Ryder McNabb is, and I'm sure you guys all know, or the rumors are, right, AEO next year, it would be a different conversation if he was, you know, 19 overalls in a row and 17, 18 years old. But the past right now, I think he's very comfortable. He makes a great living in his own country. He's a huge ambassador. He does a lot of cool shit. He gets to kind of make his own schedule outside of the Canadian series, which is only really eight, nine weekends. So he's living a pretty good life. I, I, I know as a fan, you want to see him do more. Um, but I don't, I, I don't see it changing. He's got a two year, another two years left on his deal uh, to put him to 28 years old-ish. So uh, I don't see him changing anything. Yeah, it might be I don't know, a little bit boring for us to watch. But um, I don't know. I think winning, winning – kind of trumps anything that's boring, right? He wins a bunch, makes a bunch of money, and yeah, has for a bunch him. of smiles on his face. Sure, yeah. for him. And what about, so Jess Pettison gave him a run at a few rounds, and, uh, he, you know, he's a former champion. Can Jess step up to that level, do you think? 100%. Yes, 100%. Jess Pettis can beat Dylan Wright, but it literally comes down to, and I, I've said it on whether it's Steve's show, uh, we've probably talked about it at Glen Helen. Uh, when we were, I was making fun of Kiefer because he can't break, beat Mike Brown. He can't turn. <laughs> he can't turn off his dumb. At some point, you have to be a little bit dumb to get to the next level of this sport to become the champion. Uh, I, the only guy that maybe is a little outside of that is Jet Lawrence right now. What he did this summer, he's obviously extremely smart and all that kind of stuff on his bike. But Jess is like that, very calculated, very technical, very smart. Uh, and Dylan is all that as well. But at some point, man. Dylan is able to just sort of, oh, well, boys, I don't know if I'm going to make this. Shut the gas off, close the eyes, and go for it. And I think that is what the guys behind Dylan are missing right now. And I've said it a bunch, and I've had actually text messages from his competition telling me, you know, I'm an idiot. I'm dumb for saying that. And I'm like, I disagree, and the stats are showing it right now. So it's hard to argue. But Jess Pettis, if there is anybody going to do it in the next few years, is going to be the guy or could be the guy. Okay. Got it? Yes. Yeah. This is like totally random off off what we we're talking about because we were we were kind of talking about poutine and stuff. So okay, I'm a, are, you, are you hungry? Yeah, actually, that does yeah. sound really good. Um, I'm actually I'm I'm a I'm a Crown Royal drinker. Does that make me like? Is that even like relevant? Or do you guys look at Crown like like whatever? Dolly like, drinks anything. I know, but like, does that is that actually like do people are people in Canadian uh, Canadian is is in Canada. Canada proud of Crown or is that just like some commercialized bull crap that you guys that that, that you feel like it is. <laughs> Whiskey's whiskey, buddy. Pour yeah. it in and fill it up. It don't matter. Drink it. But, man, you guys are really sounding fucking stupid <laughs> talking about Canada. Okay? You guys are sounding like real Americans. You don't know a goddamn thing about our country up here. <laughs> Canadians will drink anything. They'll entertain anybody. They'll have fun at any part of the country at any time of the night, any time of the day. And they'll always come, wake up in the morning, best buddies again, even if they get in an argument. Okay, how yeah. about this? What's better? <laughs> What's better? Uh, the Tragically Hip or Nickelback? Oh, come on. The hip all day long. All right. You don't even compare this. You can't even compare those two. I agree. I, the, I knew what my answer was. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. Nah, the hip all day long. The hip is just too, uh, so culture, Canada culture, man. Yeah, Nickelback's got some hits and stuff like that, and you can sing it with your girlfriend and whatnot, <laughs> and, and you might might have some tender moments with another guy driving to the races or something in the morning, but uh, Tragically Hip is just, that is true Canadian music uh, through and through, and it can fit in at any single party across our nation. I agree. I agree. Okay. Sticking with Dylan Wright for just a minute. And you guys touched on this a little bit with the Matt, when Mathis was on your guys show the other day, like a couple weeks ago, I think it was, but the greatest Canadian of all time, motor wise is probably Ross Pedersen, right? Rollerball is the guy. What does yes, it take? I mean, uh, stat wise. Yes. You can't argue it. Yes. So what does it take? What stat is it? Just stats that Dylan has to break, or is it something else that he needs to be considered at the the number one guy? Because his stats are growing very fast, and in his career trajectory, he's probably going to break a lot of those. Well, it, it's one of those things like you know apples to oranges. Tough to tough to kind of compare them right back in the day. Uh, you know, walk up the hill both ways to school. It was um, like it's almost like back then. Every time they touched the track, you uh, you got a championship. It's like as we call it up here, Tim Hortons hockey, where, you know, everybody's a winner kind of thing and everything they do. Um, like Ross was, he's got like 43 titles. It's, it's truly unbelievable. Now, if you condensed it just to like motocross stuff, there'd be a lot more comparable numbers, but um, the, what the reason why Ross was what he was and why he was so dominant, why he's so iconic is because he was just gnarly 
toughest guy grinding out ride anything pounding motos all these kinds of things like in this this uh you know canadian lore or even back in the day like your bob hannes and these guys that uh um, um uh roger the cost are just tough as nails right like all that kind of stuff that's from that gritty era and dylan is like that now but everything's just so modernized like he is mm. tough as nails he rides injured he fights he picks He'll crash his brains out. He'll pick his things up. I bet you he, if Ross is uh, a pretty tough guy, although he did get punched out back in, uh, I think it was 80, 88, and he lost the title that year in a bar. <laughs> yeah, I heard um, that story, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, it was a good one. Um, I think um, I think Dylan could probably throw some fists. I think he could be a tough guy outside the bike as well. So, uh, But, you know, just the modernization of the sport, the different bikes, the different competition, social media injected and everything. I honestly think that Dylan Wright is becoming – um, a very uh, modernized Ross Pedersen, just uh, uh, breaking stats, breaking hearts, breaking records. <laughs> just he's he's amazing, man. And and it's it's and you know it's it's almost like uh, the fans that get that get mad that we talk about Jet Lawrence so much. Dylan Wright is doing that right now, man. He is turning every button correctly. He is doing everything right. The fans love him. He's humble. He's great with. He's just like he's the total package. And and he's doing the winning as well. Like it's uh it's truly amazing. It's, you know, like watching Jeremy McGrath or the, it's, he's just, he's rebirthing, like remaking uh, an eye candy rider in the sport. And again, it, you know, Jess Pettis is amazing. Sean Moffenbauer, Tyler Medallion, these guys, but man, what Dylan is doing right now is pretty damn amazing. And again, the stats, you, you line all that up on top of it. He's, uh, he's changing the face of Canadian moto. Yeah, and I think it's really good for the sport up up north for Canada. I think it's really good to have a guy like him and have fans excited about something like that. And you know, hopefully, something like that will grow the the sport up there and get more riders coming up north. Uh, I think it's really great for it. I do want to ask you this: sticking with Ross uh, Pedersen for just a minute, he's obviously one of the favorites of most Canadian fans. And I'm wondering if Ross was having a ride day. At, let's say go for dunes. He's putting a ride day on, and his elbow hurt a little bit. <laughs> would he not? Would he decide to not ride, or would he ride? Oh, you that son of a bitch would ride with no arms, no legs, nothing. <laughs> huh. Guaranteed, he would be there for the people. He would be there for the people. Interesting. Okay, moving yes, on. Yes, I, that's weird how you could come up with that scenario. That's an odd one. For yeah, sure. just came yeah, to, no it just came to it just came to me. Just came to me. Just popped in your head. That's, <laughs> you're a great podcaster. That the, the thoughts. Imagination you have is unbelievable. Uh, quick thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of speaking of random stuff like that. I, I was watching the highlights today and I saw, I, I couldn't catch the writer's name when they were talking about it, but I think it was in round three at Calgary. And uh, they were saying that a guy, he lost his fingertip. And then like, I don't know if he finished the moto or not, but they were talking about some guy who lost his fingertip. I don't know if you heard about that or <laughs> yeah. know who it was. or. Oh yeah. No, no, I know everything. So, so uh, the rider's name is Quinn Amiot. Amiot. That is actually the rider that got on the podium at the uh, Pit Bike of Nations for Team Canada last year uh, when I was upside down and thinking <laughs> about myself and all that I wasn't going to bring that up. Um, <laughs> oh, I mean, why wouldn't you? That's what everybody remembers about me. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, Quinn Amiot, he had a bit of a – just a weird crash in, the, in his front uh, – sorry, his hand went into the front wheel and just kind of chunked the top of his – I think it's his middle finger uh, – chunked the top of his middle finger off. And uh, he didn't actually finish that moto uh, between Calgary and that he missed Gopher Dunes and then raced the rest of the series with like this, I don't know, man, it looked like his finger had been stuck in a barbecue for <laughs> fucking two and a half weeks. It was all burnt and crispy. and wow. and uh, But yeah, he finished it, yeah, but that was the story. So yeah, he chopped his finger off. And if you fo- there is a video there, it shows him, I can't remember if it's on the Triple Crown shoes, but it shows him like kind of running, holding his hand, running to the ambulance. Uh, um, I can't remember, it might even been on the TV show actually. I can't even remember now, but yeah, he chopped her off. But uh, yeah, he finished the series really good. Actually, he actually kind of he was having a really good year, and then from that moment on, it was like, oh no, this kind of sucks. And then he came back and still like continued having a good year with nine and a half fingers. And um, he's like the 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 biggest name on the radar as far as silly season goes right now up in Canada. Awesome. Okay. If you guys, yeah. Are- yeah so. Hey, if you guys are looking to upgrade your suspension or tune it up, clean it up, change the fluid, look up your local Racetech dealer by going to Racetech.com. All your local dealerships and service centers are located there. You can find them out. And uh, Racetech gold valves provide a plush feel with drastically improved bottoming resistance and increased traction. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed and made in the USA. So, again, visit Racetech.com. Get your suspension cleaned up, tuned up reserviced it uh and make you go faster to say can't talk can't talk tonight Galdi. it shaves some time off your laps and it's just 
race tech's good stuff. I'm running it. And I'm making, I'm making you nervous. Dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he does it every uh, show. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I just suck. I can't <laughs> so, read. I can't do the reads. I just, I'm terrible at them. Race tech. Hey, you have glasses on and everything. You can't see shit. Eh? You can't, eh? <laughs> getting old, Nick. Um, I'm getting old, man. I, Hey, Race Tech is a uh, sponsor of our podcast. Something can see. Checkers is a great freaking guy, man. That was super cool. Link us up with this guy, Charlie Johnson, who's a service center up in Canada. So uh, good, good they support you guys. They support us up here in, in Canuck land, as you guys like to call it. Canuck, yeah. I, yeah. Canuck. Checkers is fantastic, though. Yeah, he he takes care of a lot of the yeah. podcasts. He's a super fan of the sport, and we love Race Tech. Yeah, yeah, he's a beauty, and uh, the company does great work for sure. Let's drop down to the 250 class for a minute. We talked about Ryder McNabb. You kind of, you you talked about the rumors. Uh, those things aren't official yet, so we weren't going to completely announce those, but we are going to ask him what his plans are for 24. But Ryder McNabb, two-time back-to-back 250 champion, and instead of moving up to go battle a Dylan Wright, he, he may be coming to the U.S. and changing his career path a little bit. How do you feel? How do Canadian fans feel about that? Do, do they... Are they excited that he might come down here, or, or would they rather see him step up and let's go battle Dylan? Now, there's lots of time left to come back to Canada. The, this is exactly what the country, what him, his family, what they've strived for right from the beginning. Um, it's uh, it, it is he's got a a bit of a um, a bit of a nod, if you will. The, the, the Orange Brigade last winter uh, with Daniel Blair kind of helped him out to do those Texas races. He had a great showing down there. Then he broke his foot, came up, does win the Canadian title, and uh, went to the combine at Red Bud, did okay there. Um, and then he was supposed to go to Ironman and, and hit his melon. Um, so I, I just I think through trajectory, is, it is what he's done good. He's made some money the last couple of seasons winning the championships. Uh, he's young. He's got the right attitude. He's got the, he's got the Myrtle and his, is the agent for him, kind of helping out so he can get hooked up with some good guys. Maybe he goes and hangs out at the – the dog park or the dog, I don't know, whatever the hell, the dog bag. Dog pound, yeah. Lawrence, dog pound, yeah, the Lawrence, where the Lawrences are. So, I mean, the trajectory is pointing in all directions. It's He's got the same kind of attitude like Dylan Wright. He likes to work hard. Um, he's a he's a fighter kid. He comes from a very humble family. Uh, he's kind of had to learn a lot of things at a very young age. The time is now. He can come back to Canada, man. Our, our series isn't going anywhere. He'll have time to, you know, maybe Dylan Wright will be gone if, you know, it works out, but. Um, yeah, if this, you know, rumor with the AA, AEO and KTM and I'm pretty sure it's fallen in the right place. So let's hope it cross our fingers and doesn't end up like, uh, was it Phoenix Honda last year or no? Yeah. Phoenix Honda fell, fell apart last minute last year. And, um, I, I, I love it as a fan. Let's go Ryder McNabb. I'll be tattooing my, has name on my belly and oh, Canadian shit. flags. And <laughs> I might even drink a Labatt's blue. I don't know. Just, I'll, I'll get crazy. We're going to get fucking crazy up here. Do you know, I, I'll tell you where I got the Labatt's Blue thing. So, uh, being from the 80s, big Skid Row fan, just actually went and saw it last oh, yeah. week. There is a home video they did back in 89 or 90 called Oh Say Can You Scream. It's, you know, all, all this concert footage. Sebastian, being Canadian, comes out and says, yeah. you know, I remember back when I was a kid, walking down whatever highway, drinking Labatt's Blue, and that just always stuck with me. So, I don't know. That's, that's where I took it from, Skid Row. So, if Sebastian Bach doesn't hey. know what he's talking about, I don't know who does. There used to be a guy, his name was Jeff Sherrall, was a big advocate of uh, No Fear, and there, that, uh, there was a long-form written thing that Steve did uh, a while back on No Fear. Jeff Sherrall yep. was a part of it. He was an American, found a great home base up here. He was from Chicago, found a great home base in Canada in the late 80s into early 90s, and he was sponsored by Labatt's Blue, the only <laughs> racer I've ever seen sponsored by a beer company here in Canada. Labatt's Blue was his sponsor. Had a Labatt's license plate on his cube van. Well, it seems like you should be drinking Labatt's Blue then. If they support our moto ever, that's that should be your beer. Uh, our, all right, I'll get back on just because you said it. Okay, let's <laughs> right. it's got Honey, to get me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell, Amy, t- tell Amy I said what's up. Uh, well, yeah, she's probably up putting the kids to bed right now. Right on, Scotty. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask about Ryder. Where do what do you think? Has he had any kind of Supercross prep, and where do you think his ceiling is coming into the the U.S. Series? Well, that's the, that's the rough part. So the Supercross thing is obviously always the one that's in question for any Canadian race. The only one that's really ever sort of done overall or, okay, decent dart walks. There's been a couple. Darcy Lance did it, J- JSR, uh, and, of course, Cole Thompson um, is still the latest one. But he needs work at that. He is good. He's got the technical ability and everything like that. So I think it's going to, you know, do the futures-type plan and kind of slowly get into it. But 
by the time 20, if it all goes to plan and works out and he's able to kind of stay down there the next year, I think 2025, you could see him being, I don't know, a fifth to eighth place guy in the main event. Um, you know, maybe get a good start type thing. But, don't, you know, every American and anybody else that's doing the series, they have a big advantage being able to be a part of it and sort of accustomed to it for so long. So that's where he's going to have to work on his game the most. The outdoor stuff, the training, all that shit, that's going to be nothing. That'll be easy for him. But Supercross is going to be a new a new thing for him and just learning the bike and getting it set up properly and all that kind of stuff. But, um, I, I mean, I think the sky's the limit. The kid has got all the tools. And, of course, me being Canadian, I'm going to be biased. But he's he's got all the tools. And I'm not the only one seeing it, or these teams and these people wouldn't be vouching for him either, right? So mm-hmm. um, I think this is the one that could kind of put our flag back in the American side of things and kind of carry it like what JSR did or Ross did and Darcy Lange on the indoor side of things for sure, because those guys did an amazing job at times. And uh, I think Ryder McNabb is going to be the next one. Even Jess Pettis. You know, Jess Pettis was actually uh, is pretty badass at Supercross until he got injured too. But it's been a short list, so hopefully Ryder McNabb can kind of uh, ignite it again. Yeah, so uh, during the series this year, it seemed like you guys had quite a bit of like wet conditions and a lot of mudders and stuff. Did was that was it kind of like an uncommon season for you guys with rain and stuff, or was that kind of par for the course? Uh, what series are you watching, Scotty? Because we didn't have <laughs> we didn't have one mud race this year. It's wow. Maybe you were watching like the wrong year. <laughs> no, I was watching twenty three. No, we didn't have any mud races this year. There might have been some muddy practices or okay. some muddy. Well, that's, from like pride, like it's like what, a typical like you know you go to Iron Man, it's going to be muddy in practice, right? Like Walton. Okay. We're losing you, Galdi. Uh, or uh, Calgary stuff like that, but it rained a little bit. Well, you're losing me. Well, yeah, you're Hello. breaking up a little bit, but we got you now. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Um. Um. Yeah. Nope. You're gone. A little again. bit of rain in Calgary, and. That's it. What the fuck? I don't know. You keep you keep <laughs> cutting out. Let, I got. I'm good. I got one more question for you before we let you go. So, um, motocross the nations right. is coming up. Uh, I mentioned Dylan Wright, Ryder McNabb, and Jess Pettis, all our guests tonight. Is your team for this year? That's a good team. I feel like good things are going to come. I feel like this might be one of the best results you guys have had in a long, long time. How do you feel about it? I feel good, boys. Um, <sighs> feel good. they're. Uh, are you guys hear me okay? Yeah, it's just break. It's going okay. in and out. What the flip? It, Wi-Fi. I pay my bills. I have yeah. a job. I pay my bills. <laughs> fucking cell service everywhere. Goddamn bullshit. Fucking can- Canadians. Um, yeah, exactly. Cheap ass Rogers. Uh, I love it. I love it, boys. I think our team's gonna be great. I think you're gonna have a great year. Courtney Lloyd's done a great job. I'm looking forward to it. I will be cheering from uh, from this side of the pond. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm calling Dylan Wright uh, top five in his class. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be good. I'm yeah. exci- I always yeah. pull for you guys since getting to know you and Courtney a few years ago. It's, you know, obviously America number one, Canada too. So I, I would love to see you guys do really well. Uh, You're just saying that right now. There's no way you mean that at all. Ask, no Cor- ask Courtney. I have her on every year before this and talk to her and talk to you. I, I do a show with your can, your team every year before MXDN because I am a are fan. You, are you going to say something mean to a girl, Tarside? That's not like you. You're not no. say well, that's true. I, I, dude, I'm just a nice guy. <laughs> T-Dags is my boy. Like back in the day, you know, Dusty, I'm still a huge Dusty Clatt fan. I mean, I think he'd come back and win right now. So He just got engaged, actually. Congrats to Dusty Clatt. They just oh. got engaged. Cool. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he was a bad dude, but no, I, I love the Canadians, man. I love. I, I want to come up and really. I really do want to come up and come to a couple of the races next year. Hey, anytime. I will look after you, Buzz. We'll have a great time, man. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's like anything outside of America that you go to. Everybody's super chill, has a lot of fun, and we love watching racing. And uh, at the end of it, everybody has a beer and laugh and all that kind of stuff. It's always a good time. Hell yeah! Well, we'll make it happen, Gaudy. I appreciate you jumping on here tonight. Again, tell the wife and the kids what's up. I uh, always enjoy seeing you guys, and hopefully, uh, we'll we'll hang out again sometime soon. I don't know about Vet Nationals this year, but yeah, maybe something else will come together. Where we can get hooked up. Love to, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Have fun, Scotty. Nice meeting you on, online. Yeah. Have fun with the rest of the Canadians, and um, I'll go get some Labatt's beer. I'll be passed out here in about 20 minutes. <laughs> and some Hawkins cheesies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All Cheers, right. boys. See you, man. Bye. That's Ryan Gaughan. Always a good time. Yep, apparently we know nothing about Dan yeah, and I, I screwed all that up. Uh, we, you and I both screwed all that even, up. Even all of my, <laughs> even all the episodes of Charlie Park Boys, I, I've watched. I'm still, oh I've still failed. I'm not into that show. That really? show just doesn't make me laugh. I don't. Uh, and you just have, no, like you have TJ no soul, likes man. it. He tries, he tries to get me to watch it, and I watch. I just 
didn't get it. And what? There's another you, one. What's the other one? I can't. I don't know. Oh, uh, Letterkenny. Yes, that Letter, one. Letterkenny's Letterkenny's all right. Trailer Park Boys is my is one of my jams. I've watched it. The you, the thing is, is like how many episodes have you watched? I think I watched maybe like started from the beginning. Watched like the first five yeah, or so, so. So the first season is like ass yeah, so so. But once but once you get like once you keep watching it and you get two or three to four seasons in, okay, and they've and they've all and all the characters have developed and they start building. Like that, the, that that's first, a lot of dedication to put in something. You tell me that's going to build to like the fourth season. No, the second or third season starts getting better, but like the third, the third through like the sixth or seventh season is just it's it's it. Every single one of them is just a grand slam. Well, when I run out of other things to watch, maybe I'll try it again. Uh, before we get to Jess Pettis, big news today, or fairly big news. Everybody's been waiting on the reveal of the Triumph Two Hundred and Fifty. Came out today. Ricky Carmichael, Evan Ferry, quick little video, no graphics, but kind of give you a little bit. Like, the first decent look at the bike. What'd you think? Did the did the not having graphics bother you? Hmm. I'm not gonna say it bothered I never, me. I never but even it, really paid attention. I didn't even really it, notice yeah, that. I won't say it bothered me, but I think it would have looked better if it had graphics. It was just very just all black, and I think it was yeah. No, so I, I didn't honestly, love it. I did, that didn't even like, I didn't even really notice. What the I hell did you pay attention to? What were you looking watching at? them ride? It actually watched them ride. Watching Carmichael drag bars. Yeah, it yeah. whips really good. Apparently, according <laughs> to to Evan and Ricky. Yeah, yeah, it uh, yeah, it whips really good. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky was like, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about how it corners and accelerates and starts and yeah, yeah. But are how excited are you about this new team and, or new OEM? Not new team. I mean, I guess a new team also. But are you excited about another OEM coming in and what it could mean? And do you think the bike is going to be competitive? Um, year one, I don't know. That's really hard to. I mean, it can you can say it feels good and, and you know it's kind of one of those deals where everybody looks good at the test track, right? Like yeah, and like uh, and. The track that the Carmichael track looked pretty primo, so it was good conditions and and yeah, it looked like it. I mean, it, it looked like they were having fun riding it. And but how did that how that translates into actual racing, especially on Supercross? I mean, who's hard to tell? But I think for the my biggest thing that I like about not just Triumph but but Beta and then you know Gas Gas has been around for a few years now, and I just like the the more factory opportunities for our riders, like. Like our like we know we had Benny Bloss on last week and mm-hmm. the fact that he's getting the factory ride that we feel you know like we mentioned he feel like he deserves that I kind of more like the opportunities that the riders are getting rather than like if if I don't I'm not one of those guys where like oh now that triumphs out like oh I'm gonna go get a triumph like I remember when Gas Gas came out everybody's like oh I want to go get the Gas Gas I'm like well I mean it's just go get a KTM or Husky it's like the same thing like. Like I, I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to go get a Triumph just because it's the new thing. I'm not. I've never been that kind of person. I can never afford to get the brand new thing, anyways. Right, right. But uh, um, I just, you know, I think it's cool. The I think the opportunity for more sponsorships and for more f- factory rides. That's what I like, rather than just a new. Like I could care less if it was Triumph or Beta or whatever. Just the fact that there's opportunities is is cool. It could have been a John Deere bike, and I I, I would <laughs> I wouldn't have. I just I like the I like the new people entering the sport. Whether not not the the brand name brand name really doesn't mean much to me about it. Yeah, I I think that's the biggest thing is more opportunities mm-hmm. for more riders, spreading it out a little bit, uh, strengthening the the industry. I hope. That would be the obviously the main thing is strengthen the industry. Yeah, more bikes for sale. Uh, you know, if if it uh, improves the industry, the financial side of the money coming into the sport, that's key. That's really what's important. Uh, you know, and I think I, I just hope they stick around. I, I don't see why they wouldn't. So I, I am excited about it. I seeing the video today didn't really do much for me. I like watched I, it. Yeah, yeah, I watched too. I mean, it didn't. I didn't go. Oh my god! I yeah, can't believe exactly. you know it's. It wasn't like that. It's just I'm just really glad that the sport is growing and evolving, and I think that's the key that I'm most excited about. Uh, it's, you know, will they be competitive right off the bat? Yeah, I think they'll do okay. I think they're going to – I don't think it's, it's going to be – It's only, right? I, yeah, I don't think it's going to be like when KTM first came in and they were just so far behind the, the rest of the bikes. I mm-hmm. think they're going to be pretty close. So I think they will be pretty competitive. Now, will they go in? I don't know. But I think it's going to be something that – yeah. It's not like it's, they're going to be 
no, I don't believe they're going to be not finishing all the time and like still developing. I think it's going to be pretty decent. And yeah. I'm really excited about it. I think our first guest of the night is on, so we're going to try to get to him real quick. FXR is designed by racers for racers with industry leading fit, finish, and performance. Progression is the name of the game with every new piece created. At FXR, we push our brand to the next level to provide you with the best products possible. Visit FXRRacing.com to see their numerous gear lines or go to your local dealership and af- ask for FXR. Tonight, FXR brings us Jess Pettis. What's up, Jess? Hey, guys. Not too much. Uh, yeah, just hanging out. Just hanging out. Uh, are you doing any training? Are you getting any MXDN prep in, or are you taking a little break right now? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, we had about, a, I guess, a week or so off since uh, I did Ironman there about yeah, a week ago. So took a little bit of a week off, um, just kind of training for fun, a little bit of mountain biking and, and road biking. I actually raced on the weekend, too, I guess, so not a lot of downtime. But, um, yeah, man, just uh, kind of getting back into it this week, just keeping in shape and yeah, going to just grind time for, I guess, about three more weeks or a month till, till yeah, and it's the nation. Yeah, it'll be here before we know it. That stuff, you know, the time goes by fast. Um, just finished up your series a few weeks ago, and you mentioned doing Ironman. But, uh, yeah, second overall in the 450 Pro Class. I think you were only off the podium a couple times, a couple moto wins. Honestly, a pretty successful season as far as I'm concerned. I want to know how you feel about it. Uh, Dylan Wright, what, five championships in a row now. Um, so that part probably is frustrating to you, but I would assume overall you're pretty happy with your season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pretty satisfied for sure. Um, as most of most of you know, last year was a tough one for me. So yeah, with a lot of injuries and just didn't really didn't really race a whole lot. So kind of my game plan for the year was to to come in and and make all all the rounds and progress as the season went and hopefully be kind of fighting up for the wins. I know that's that's where I belong and on the good days. So I think we kind of accomplished all that and yeah, pretty, pretty good season. Um, you know, I feel like I was getting better and better and, and closer to, uh, getting one of those overalls here at the end, but, um, no, I'm pretty satisfied for sure. Sorry, oh. Scotty. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you, you were telling your battle with Dylan this year was pretty good. And it kind of, when I was watching it this year, it kind of reminded me a little bit of how jet and chase were battling and uh, I know that you did have a you did have a moto win on him, and, and you were ahead of him sometimes. But did, was there was there any round where you felt like or or moto where like you felt that you had him, and for whatever reason it just it just didn't happen, or he got you, or just how did how kind of how did that how does that rivalry with him uh, feel with you? Yeah, um, yeah, I got a couple moto wins on him, but that was earlier in the season, and then. Um, once we headed east, once we got to Deshaun Bow, I had a good round there. Um, didn't finish too far in front of me, and I, I put in a good fight. I felt like I had had really good speed, and I felt like I raced the track really well. Um, he kind of just let it hang out in a few sections where I wasn't exactly willing to just put it all on the line and kind of get loose. But um, Deshaun Bow, we were close. I feel that I, I could have had one there. Um, and honestly, Walt in the, the final round, <clears throat> um, I went down on the first lap and came from pretty well. Yeah, very, very back of the pack. And I had had really good lap time. So I was a bummer on the first moto, second moto. I had a bike issue right from the beginning. So, um, and I just had to salvage it in for that. And I ended up getting the DNS. So I saw Walton. I had, I, I was hungry for it. Honestly, I, I, I wanted to end the season with a bang. And, and I felt my riding and my speed and bike setup, everything was really good at Walton. But, uh, hey, man, it's only, only eight rounds. So, next year we, we got to make it happen and i think now we have a good building year ready to go off yeah i want to ask you about next year in a minute but just sticking with this year when you when you're as good as you are and you're obviously batting the battling the guy that's the past champion and like scotty said where maybe it just doesn't work out on from some days how do you keep your your positivity what do you do to regroup during the week to say hey man like you know i i know i have it i have you know i have the ability to beat him and just kind of not get down. Like it's such a mental game, the sport. So how do you keep that mental side up? Yeah, it's a, it's for sure a, a huge part of the sport. Um, yeah, just kind of go uh, each week. I just went back to the drawing board and, and figured out where my struggles were and and where I needed to improve on on my end, and try not to worry about him him too much. You know, just try to be the best self I could be. And um, I think the week before Deshaun Bow, I really worked on some of my weaknesses, 
just with some sprint speed and just hanging it out in some of those areas. My, my endurance was great all season, and I was in it right till the end. Like some of the motors I came off, and I wasn't even tired. I was just more frustrated than anything. Um, and I was just lacking the raw speed. So for me, like it, it was yeah, it was pretty frustrating because I see Chase in the U.S. as well. He you know he gets a second, he has a good moto, comes off and he put his head down and kind of just bummed out. But uh, I, I definitely had some of those motos where where I was the same. Um, but then that's racing, and, and that's what I love about it is the challenging part, and it's not easy. So um, you know, go back and and that kind of gives me something to strive for during the week. It, it, there's always something to work on, you know. So. Um, kind of always trying to take a look back and put it in perspective from, you know, even last year was rough. So I'm like, okay, it's all good. We got to be positive, you know, but in the moment it's, it's tough for sure. Yeah, I can imagine. And you mentioned, you know, last year not going the way you wanted it to and having some struggles. And of course you've had injuries and you mentioned not pushing past your limit. Basically. Is that something that you kind of came into the season saying, Hey, like you did say, I, I want to finish every round and I have to know when, where that line is. And once I get to that line, I'm not going to go past that line. Is that something that you kind of uh, focused on throughout the season? Yeah, I, I would say for sure at the beginning of the season, that was a big thing in my head just to to kind of make it through the races and just progress and, and, and not take those big risks that maybe I have in the past where, um, you know, I've always kind of just been, been all out. I want to win or I crash trying. And, yep. and it, it bites me at times. And then I'm just, uh, you know, I'm sitting on the couch and right now I could have just took a second or a third and it would have been okay. And I, I did that for sure for the first, uh, first little bit. And then you always want more, right? Being a racer. So, um, <laughs> that was kind of where I had to find that, that fine line. I feel like I did a pretty good job at it this year. Um, I mean, I didn't really have too many, too many get offs, but I, I definitely knew that near the end of the season was trying to, to be better on that end. And the team was talking with me just, you know, saying that was one of my bigger bigger weaknesses, just taking that that risk. Which every time we go on the track, you know, if you want to win, you uh, you kind of gotta, especially racing someone like Dylan, you have to be able to put it all on the line. And you know, he's fast. We're we're going at a good speed, so you're not going to look into to just a win or just riding into a win. You kind of gotta gotta race him for it. Yeah. So you did probably have conversations with yourself while on the bike of, okay, now it's time to maybe push a little harder and cross that line. You, you had to deal with that in moto, I would assume at times, like, am I going to go for, past that line? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. One, my best race this season was that day, Sean Bow, and, yep. and that was kind of my mindset, like, you know, screw it, let's just go for this and, and send <laughs> it a bit more. And, and, it was good, but you know, I, and, and at times where even throughout the season, I tell myself that, and then I have a, a sketchy moment, or I almost throw it away big time and and save it, and I'm like, oh, that that was, that was close, and then it kind of uh, puts me in protect mode for like maybe two, three laps, and then I get my shit back in gear and and I make another push. But at that point, it was it was tough. So it's uh, it's it's crazy, man. Sometimes Dylan, like he'll have a, a really big moment, but just brush it off and go like just like it didn't happen where i think um at times where I, i'm just like okay that was that was close let's uh let's back it down for a lot but um yeah I, I think we like we improved on that and that's just something that takes a little bit of time too I and mean, when you hit the ground uh you know a couple of times and you get a big consequence from that it's it's a hard thing to overcome but um you know it wasn't really like in my mind or my thoughts at all near the end of the season which is cool yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, Scotty. Oh, good. Um, so you know, you you had some, you had, you had a top ten and and the uh, Iron Man, <clears throat> and I thought that was really cool battling with Phil and all that. Um, <laughs> but uh, so Phil I loved I, it. The question I had is, does it feel what what feels more intense, being inside the top ten in a U.S. national or like like what we've been talking about your battles with uh, with Dylan and being like battling for a podium in the Canadian series or, or versus being like top 10 in the, in the U S national. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. Um, you know, I, I was really stoked with the 10th in, in moto one, but it's not the same feeling I would say as like when you get a win, you know, when you work really hard for it and you find like, you know, you, you can celebrate pretty good, but I'm not going to come over the finish at Ironman in 10th and like throw some fist pump right. and start like grabbing my bike. Um, but in that aspect, like I've never done an AMA pro national. I have done some super cross, but, but I've never done that. So I, 
I always wanted to. And then to prove that in the first moto that, that I can be in the mix was cool. And, and to myself, that felt like that was a nice accomplishment. Um, obviously, that didn't really work for the second moto. But, yeah, it, it, it felt really good. Honestly, I was happy to do that. And it makes me hungry to come do more. And I think, like, I know when I ride good and when I ride, you know, okay and i didn't really feel on at ironman and i i know i could have pushed up uh even you know a few more positions on a, on a better day so you know that would really really make me stoked even like the around the seventh sixth place mark knowing i have a really good moto and then fight for it even harder up at the front um but i mean it, it's cool like I, I didn't know where i'd fit in at all i didn't know um you know top 20 top 10 up, you know, wherever. So I think it, it's cool to know maybe next time when I come down there to just set a bit of expectation and and uh, and just push for even a little bit more. Yeah, I think a 14th with a DNF is pretty damn good. Yeah, I don't know how I got 14th still with the DNF. Um, that's crazy. But yeah, it, with the DNF too, it's a bit of a bit of a, a bummer situation. Yeah, but it's racing and just had a had a very Big crash off the start, and then my bike is super twisted up. So I got a listener question uh, that a guy wants to know about an incident that happened in Calgary uh, that maybe maybe was a brake check in a rut with you and Dylan. Um, just kind of would like to get in there. So I guess the middle fingers were thrown. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Any perspective on how it went down? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean we were having a good battle, and um. Yeah, we were both we were both fighting for the lead, and then we came into a section where we come up the hill, and it's a, it's a super one line. And I heard him like coming right up the hill on me, so I just slowed up a bit in the corner. He tapped my wheel because I knew that at times he can get a little bit flustered. So I'm like, well, um, you know, <laughs> I know that's how what, what he would do, and that that's what we do a lot of times. So um, it's just racing, and then yeah, at the in the moment when he went by, I didn't know if he fingered me or put his hand up or, or what but um I, I mean i don't really care that's racing and i like keeping you on the track and i think it all makes uh makes for good good times laugh and uh yeah <laughs> yeah it's, we have a quite a quite a quite a good like racing history like we we battled a lot throughout the year so i think we know like you know how each other ride and it's uh it's cool it's cool to be doing it yeah that way I'm sorry. Go ahead. It seems like you guys get along really well though, off the track. It's, it just seems like in Canada in general, everybody for the most part gets along. It's a really cool atmosphere. So it's good that you can go do battle on the track and then off the track, be okay with it. Understand that it's part of racing. And uh, we're obviously we're going to get to the MXD and stuff here in a minute, but you know, and still be teammates with them. I, I think that's really, that's a good thing to strive for. Cause in the U S a lot of the guys, once they have problems on the track, it's just, everybody holds grudges and, it seems a little silly sometimes. Like you got to grow up. You know? Wait, wait. Are, are people in Canada nice? Is that is that like I mean, that's a what thing? I hear? I don't know. I mean, Galdi's kind of a dick, but <laughs> I don't. I don't know. That was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people... Galdi, Galdi, Galdi's one of the Galdi's one of the different different ones, but <laughs> no. Um, yeah. no. no it's good. Me and me and Dylan, we've, we've had like a, a few run-ins, and obviously emotions get high and stuff at times, and especially uh, you know after the motos, like it's it's hard to race at our level. Um, and, and there's a lot of money on the line and man, blood, sweat, tears, everything put into it to, to get the wins. And then, um, I've been really frustrated with him at times. He's been frustrated with me at times, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, you know, we, we usually come up by the next weekend and it's all good. So, um, I think that's just the racing community in Canada is, is a lot smaller than in the U S so, you know, everyone's at one point forced to be, you know, pitted right next to that person or see them, you know, like Dylan and I, we we now live 45 minutes away from each other, so there's only a couple practice tracks to go ride during the week, and you know you're gonna run into the guy. Or like, yeah. So no, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's usually all good. I mean, you go to Glen Helen, and uh, you know there's 20 factory, there's a bunch of factory dudes, there's 20, 30 pros. It's a little easier to avoid people, but <laughs> out here it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a smaller motor community, and then. Um, it's just how it is, but yeah, everyone seems to be a good vibe and, and have fun. And our series is serious, but a little bit more laid back than, than in the U S for sure. I mean, um, but yeah, both, both are fun. I mean, it's great. 
Yeah, I hear I hear nothing but good things about the atmosphere of the Canadian series. And I was just telling Galdi, like, I, I think I'm going to really try to get Michael Lindsay to send me up there next year to a couple rounds. I want to come experience it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got to check it out. Absolutely. Calgary is, it, Calgary is a cool one. You're right in the city. That's on the West Coast. And then, uh, I mean, Deschambeau is really cool. It's crazy French hands everywhere. And <laughs> the food, everything, the culture is pretty crazy. It's cool. It's uh, that you I'd recommend. Yeah, those are the ones I have on my list, so I appreciate that. Yeah, that's I'm gonna make that a goal. Go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, that's kind of what one of my questions has is is which round of or which Canadian track defines the Canadian motocross series the most? Is it would it be one of those two, and which one of those is is your favorite? Yeah, um, those two are great, and then there's also Walton our, our final round, which it's kind of like a, a Loretta's kind of a mini Loretta's kind of vibe with the amateurs all week. And then the, the pro day on Sunday and um, yeah, everyone sticks around. There's usually a bunch of activities every single night. And that one is great. Deschambeau is uh, a beautiful facility. Like uh, yeah, one of the nicest ones I've ever been to. And yeah, there's, there's two or three good ones for sure. I really like the, the Deschambeau track. It's elevation, big jumps, good dirt. It's uh, you can view the whole track from up in a big tower. It's cool for the spectators, and everyone gets right down close to the track. That's one thing a little different than in the U.S. I think, like, man, some of the Canadian fans are you're almost running over their feet, like <laughs> on the side of the track. It's and yeah, especially in the and they're like way deep in the back section. People are drinking beers, and you're like almost hitting them. It's crazy at times, but um, the, the fans get into it. They're they're super stoked. Yeah, that's exciting. Do you have another one? Yeah, I just so is is that last round? Is that the only round that they do amateurs at, or is it kind of like an is there an amateur program during y'all's normal rounds? Um, there there is an amateur day at every round. Okay. So on the Saturday is amateur, and then Sunday is pro. But they have a a big amateur week the week of Deschambeau, and then two weeks after that they have like the the final one of the whole year. Uh, everyone from yeah, from the West Coast. Everyone comes over. It's like the, the trans can, they call it. So the the final one is big at Walton, but they have, yeah, I guess two amateur weeks that are kind of combined with the pros. And then uh, a lot of the pros even hang out and, and whatnot at the, at the races for the week. So, so is there any, uh, is there any up and coming super mini riders that are, that are kind of turning heads or are they, is that feel competitive? What are what is the competition looking like coming up? Yeah, that. Yeah, I don't really pay attention too much on that <laughs> end, but there, yeah, there, it's not, it's a little different than, than down in the U.S., but there's a couple of kids that stand out. Um, there's like a Dexter Sites, his name, he's from, uh, from Calgary, Alberta. He's a little ripper and then a couple other, other little guys, but, um, yeah, I don't know about too much, but yeah, there, there's a couple, I think. Just Pettis tonight brought to you by FXR. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the events and the tracks up there, Edmonton this year was a little odd. Um, I think it was a three moto format, which was unusual. And it was kind of inside. It looked like it was inside a dirt track state, um, facility. Yeah. A little, a little odd. They're trying to do something different. what do you think of it? I mean, is it got room for improvement? Yeah. Um, I think it, it really caught us all, all off guard for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't really I just I try and race what's in front of us, but it was pretty uh, pretty frustrating. But at the end of the day, we we got through it safe, and I mean I, I got a couple wins there, I think in the motos, and then yeah I got second place overall, so it, it was okay result wise. Um, super sketchy kind yeah. of track. It looked, looked like it. looked it. Dirt, the dirt, dirt, the dirt they yeah the dirt they couldn't even put water because it was just too hard, and <laughs> I didn't know what you called. Dirt. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it was like what you would see on a flat track that they tried to put into mountains. But yeah, it was um, kind of all, it was sort of blue, blue grooved as they call it in, the, in the road yeah. racing or um, dirt track racing. And yeah, it just it was already blue grooved when you guys got on it. Yeah, it's not not exactly motocross yeah. uh, type of dirt. No, no, exactly. And I almost had a really big moment. I, I, there's a picture of me like uh, basically 12 o'clock in the air, but like <laughs> an endo. And I rode the front wheel, and it was like, uh, it was a little flashback to last year, to say the least. Because last year, we had a track that was really bad, and and everyone complained. And there was a lot of, like, people that got injured and stuff, and I broke my elbow there. And 
I was super frustrated with the whole situation, but, and then if we come back and this is our first round. I'm like, man, I can't have like, I, something like this can't take me out for, you know, like such a, you know, we train in Florida for the last three, four months and yep. put all this effort and then we show up and I'm just like, man, I just need to get through this. That was everyone's <laughs> mindset for sure. But, um, I told myself that this series kind of starts at round two. <laughs> Yeah, I saw an interview you did, and you said that. I think it was with Direct Motocross, and yeah, you told him, yeah, series starts next weekend or something. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah, and then, of course, and then of course, it was my, my worst result of the year, and I <laughs> rode like absolute crap. And I'm like, oh, crap, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, still a good season, as we said. Second overall, can't really complain. Um, I want to talk to you. You came down to Ironman, and you have a lot of experience coming down to the U.S. You've done numerous Supercross races. Um, yeah, do, do you – like supercross over motocross is it just kind of equal i know you've done a bit you've had some bad luck and had some injuries at some supercross i think you got hurt at houston a few years ago like 2018 maybe yeah uh 2021 2021 or okay 2020. yeah how how do you want would you like to make supercross like a full season of supercross is that something that's a goal at some point and you know, how do you feel about supercross versus outdoors yeah, I love Supercross. Honestly, it feels like you're you're riding a BMX bike, and and it's so fun. And uh, I I almost prefer it in a way. Like I think I think I'm a pretty technically skilled rider in that aspect, and it suits my style. Um, and I mean, yeah, I I love the grind of the outdoors too. But they're both good. I'm I'm not really sure where my Supercross future is at okay. at the moment. Like I I had a pretty good pretty good year in 2019. I I mean I did five rounds of it and had some good results. Um, and then I trained at Alden Baker's for two two off seasons after that, and got injured. Um, I got injured at Houston, like in in practice, which didn't show my hard work and where I was at against all those other guys I was riding with every week at Alden's. I mean, uh, I, I knew that was going to be a good season if, if it didn't go that way. Um, and then ever since then, yeah, the team they didn't really want me to do it last year because they didn't feel my body was healthy enough to do it and then yeah just uh unless i get a good opportunity to go do it but to go do it on my own and try and try and get back to that point and, and prove to get on a ride there would be tough i think um but but my my interest would be there um but for now i mean it's good just racing the outdoors and then if i can drop in do maybe three four ama outdoors throughout the season and motocross nations i mean I think that's a pretty solid season. And then, I mean, if, if something pops up or uh, anything yeah, happens, then Supercross would definitely be interesting to me. But yeah, at the moment, I don't think it'll happen. Okay. Yeah, so uh, talk about, like, the support that you have. I mean, technically, you're on the Canadian factory team. How, how much KTM. Is, yeah. Yeah, KTM, yeah. yeah. And how much influence does that have of the U.S. team? Is there, you know, is it kind of its own deal? Is it kind of spun off of... I guess as a branch of the U S team, kind of how does that whole thing work? Yeah. Um, our, our team, like they talk hand in hand with even Roger and Ian and some of the guys all, all over there. Um, even the mechanics and stuff about what's going on. And then, yeah, um, we get factory service motors. So all, all that stuff is, is kind of the hand in hand, the same. And when I go over to the U S like when I did the supercross stuff, we're, uh, we we're kind of spending all our time at like the test track or even at, we had a little, little spot at the KTM shop. So we're, we're, we're pretty heavily involved with them, I'd say. Um, but we also kind of run a, you know, our own program up here. And, um, and, and if we keep them happy, we're doing things good. I think then, then it's all good. So um, also when I come down to Ironman stuff like this, we just bring our KTM sprinter. We do it all on our own. Um but if we need help, I think that they would be there, but we kind of come prepared to where we don't have to rely on them, you know? So, um, here in, in Quebec where I'm living now, I'm only like 25 minutes away from the KTM headquarters, which they have, yeah, they have a bunch of employees and they have our race shop. Um, they, they talk with the U S like every day, sending motors and parts and stuff back and forth. And, um, kind of, yeah it's it's pretty good little program we got going yeah um we had a listener that wanted to know if does this canadian have a production rule um no i don't i don't even know like we 
like as far as like um I don't know how that like works either. <laughs> mil, yeah, like fifty two mil forks and stuff like that. I we we can't even get them, but if we could, I think I could run them. Yeah. I don't think it's yeah, I don't think it's like a problem, but, but you can't modify the, like um, modifying the frame and all that's what you, I think stuff like that that we're Oh, not, no, no, no. Yeah, no. It's, it's not like Europe. I I think yeah. we just got to keep our stuff. Basically the bike I'm riding is like what uh what Cooper, these guys in the U.S. would be would be running. You know, we can't right. like be doing no crazy stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So the, those bikes are pretty close, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're not far off. No, no, exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Before we let you go, obviously, I want to touch on motocross of nations. I I was just telling Galdi, I think this Canadian team is one of the best I've seen in years. Uh, you know, I've always I love Colton Fasciati and T Dags and all those guys, but I think you guys this year have a chance to do something really special for Canada. Um, how do you feel about it? How strong do you feel about your chances? I think so. Yeah, I think it's our, our best odds we have. Um, Dylan and Ryder as my teammates, and they obviously showed this year that uh, that we're, we're good. You know, I think even myself and Dylan at Ironman on a, on a, a big scale can be competitive, and um, I, I know myself and Dylan could even be better than we what, what we did there uh, on a good day, and, and Ryder as well, man. I've seen him at some of the races this summer and if he can ride like that uh, on the world stage, then he, he's really, really good. Um, but as everyone knows, you know, it's uh, our Canadian series to the U S or the U S to Europe. Like it's all so different while we race. So mm-hmm. if we all come in our a game, I, I think we can do really, really good. Um, but man, we're just gonna, I think go, we have a really fun team. We all get along. Everyone will bring a good vibe and, Hopefully, bring some good good riding and good good results. I think I think there's no reason like why why we can't do good. What would you be happy with? I, I feel like top ten is for sh- almost for sure. Like in my mind, unless there's a really you know mechanical or something bad happens, I feel like top ten. I'm even. I'm, I think in my mind, I'm seeing you guys around seventh. Yeah, I I think that would be great. I think when I did the nation in 2018. With Fossiotti and Medeglia, we got 10th, I believe. 10th combined, yeah, and you were 8th in MX2, yep. Yeah, which I think was awesome. So I think that is a realistic good goal. I think we can be within there and we'd all be happy. Um, What is the best result that Canada's gotten, actually? It's a good question. Yeah, to be honest, (laughs) I didn't look, so I don't know the answer to that. Uh, That would be a question for Galdi if he's still listening. He could text it, or yeah, but I, I don't know. Whatever it is, we got to try and beat that. So. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's a good goal. I like that. I know that would make Courtney happy. Uh, yeah, we're. Oh, Courtney be stoked. She's she's the best. I, I love Courtney, so I, I'm really excited for you guys. I'll yeah. be definitely pulling for you uh, right behind the U.S. So I'm looking forward to. Yeah, it's not that far off. So get you some rest. Get ready to get get back on the bike and start training, man, because it's coming. Yeah, yeah, you betcha. We'll uh, we'll see you guys there. Yeah. Hey, one more. Uh, this isn't either or. Cheetos or Hawkins cheesies. Uh, Cheetos. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, you know, Mathis just raved about cheesies, and I finally got some, and I was like, yeah, they're not that good. No. <laughs> <laughs> Gal- Galdi said the same thing, so it's yeah, Mathis is just an idiot. <laughs> Clearly, he's an idiot. Hey, y- y- y'all need some ketchup chips. I heard that's a Canadian thing. You guys ever had ketchup chips? I have not no. eaten them, but I have seen them. Uh, I think that you can get them here, but they are not very popular. Not like they are up there. Yeah, up here. We got that. We got good maple syrup and some poutine. So yeah, that's I, another good reason to come up to one of our rounds. I love maple syrup. I've never had poutine, so it's I'm going to make a trip. Yep. It's, All like, right. gra- it's like gravy good. fries. It's- yeah, yeah, sounds awesome. Sounds fantastic. I'll make a trip. I'll have to text you if ever, ever happens, and yeah, come say hi. So um, hopefully, hopefully next season I'll be up there. All right. Sounds good, guys. All right, Jess. Thanks for your time, man. You have a good night, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, cheers. Thank All you. Right. See ya. That's Jess Pettis. Uh, yeah, that was he's a good time, man. I, I like him. He really – I watched him when he was riding Supercross. You know, I remember, like, I guess it was 21 in Houston. Like, he was riding really well, and then, yeah, it had a big crash. And, like, the guy's got so much talent, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, things just didn't go as planned in the U.S. It was kind of a bummer. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that they were on the same – caliber bikes as the u.s guys are oh really yeah the factory guys i knew that you know i thought that they would be close but i didn't think that they'd be quite the same yeah they might not be exact but i think they're fairly close like ktm 
Can, Canada is yeah. a pretty big deal. Now, the, the KTMs kind of look the same there as they do here. But to be honest with you, I I feel like the other brands' bikes, uh, when I was watching them today, I, uh-huh. I like the look of them better. than I, I don't like the looks of most of our factory bikes, to be honest in, with in you. In what way? I, they're, what they're, don't you like? I mean, they're obviously the big, the, I'm not, a, I'm not, the Red Bull KTM graphics look good, but for the most part, I'm not crazy about the, the, the energy drink logos on the bikes. Okay. I don't, I, and I don't really like, I feel like the, the matted look of the star Yamaha is kind of okay. I like, I like more that old school glossy look and the star bike kind of has that more like matte look to it. Um, I don't know. I just want to, I, I, all I can tell you is that when I was watching, I was like, dang, they're, those bikes, like they, they have a different look to them. And I, I like the, the Canadian way they, bikes. Yeah. The you Canadian thought- bikes look good. Just the same as when we were, uh, who was it? The GNCC guy we had on a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember his name now. DeLong, Craig DeLong. From was it DeLong? No, oh, well, no. We had, we, we had Ricky, Russell, uh, Ricky Russell. Ricky Russell. Yeah. Ricky Russell. Yeah. I thought his bike, like I, I mentioned it then my, too. My, my teammate, Ricky Russell. Yeah, yeah, your teammate, yeah. The I don't D, say, D well, class why you rolling your class, eyes, man. Yeah. I, rode, I rode for Ampro, <laughs> and I'm riding for him again at Ironman. I, I don't understand why you're rolling your eyes at Yeah, me. whatever you say, man. Yeah. I'll be on a factory. I'll be on Zach Osborne's bike. I am team Ampro. Yeah, bro. And, and my bike is completely race taked out. I, I don't know what your problem is, but we got our next <laughs> guest on the line. He's going to be brought to you tonight by WUSA. W is your source for all things wheels. If you're looking for a complete set of wheels for your bike, we have something for every budget. If you want to use the same wheels used by Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, Malcolm Stewart, Christian Craig, Chad Reed, and Jeremy McGrath, just name a few, we have what you need. Visit WUSA and use promo code MOTOXPOD to save. Tonight, WUSA brings us five-time Canadian champion, Ryder McNabb. What's up, Ryder? Hey, what's going on? Oh, not a lot, man. We're just uh, doing an all-Canadian show and learning that we don't know shit about Canada. Galdi made us feel stupid. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, he does that. Yeah, he's pretty good at that. I was using all these stupid yeah. slangs that I'd learned and talking about Labatt's Blue and Hawkins Cheesies, and he's, he just told me I was basically an idiot. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, Ryder, man, congrats on another championship. Um, yeah, two-time, two-time 250 champion. Um, yeah, you per, said, you yeah said I said five, five times. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of Dylan Wright, who I've already talked to. I apologize for that. Two-time, 250 He'll champion. Take five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he may win five before it's all over. Uh, four overalls and never off the podium. Hell of a year, man. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a solid year coming in. I didn't know if I was going to be 100%, but uh, it ended up working pretty good. So pumped on the year and uh, excited to see what's next. Yeah, you came off a pretty serious broken leg earlier this year, right? Yeah, I broke a uh, broken tib fib um, at the start of the year. I uh, had to get surgery and stuff, but uh, we came back. So after ha- coming back from that injury, were you were what were your expectations going into the season? Were they tapered a little bit? Where you thought, well, it's going to take me a l- little while to build, or were you pretty confident that you could repeat? Um, honestly, it was. What I was I mean, I was feeling really, really good at the start of the year. So mm-hmm. we got like all my testing and stuff done on the new bike done and I was feeling really comfortable. So um I knew if I got a week or two in before the season I knew I could get back because I tried to stay in as much um or as good a shape as I could with upper body and everything like that. And uh I knew if I could get one to two weeks on the bike before the season I knew I was gonna be I was going to be up there and just had to build on the first round. The first round wasn't, uh, wasn't, it was kind of a weird round. I mean, they built the track the night before, but, uh, yeah, Edmonton. it was, it was good. So it was just kind of being smart that weekend and then just to build from there. And then, I mean, once I knew I had the speed and everything like that, it kind of just was like, Hey, well now we just go to work and we keep, uh, building the points lead. And that's what we did. Went four rounds in a row and, um, and then kind of just, we put a front moose in my bike and I wasn't like a hundred percent comfortable with that. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask, sorry, Scotty, I, I, I was going to ask if once you got those four wins, did you tell yourself, Hey, let's just maintain a little bit and not over, you know, push too far. Or did the other riders actually just start improving? Um, it was, uh, 
I mean, I think it was a little bit of both. I think um, Harrison definitely started going better at the uh, last couple of rounds, but um, yeah, I was definitely definitely playing it a little bit safe in my head. Um, didn't want to make make a stupid mistake or uh, something like that and end it right there. So yeah, yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, yeah. So out of those guys that you were kind of in the championship with, uh, you know, Nasky, Benoit, and Harrison, who who all had a mo- uh, overall wins this season. Which one of those guys did you like maybe consider the most as your like your biggest threat? And like, w- if you were behind any of those guys during the moto, which which one would you least want to be battling with or be behind? Um, honestly, neither of them. I didn't want to get. I didn't want to get beat by anyone. But uh, I mean, if I if I had to pick one, it would probably be. Um, probably the guy that was closest to me in the championship is like, if I was behind him, I still got to go. Um, Cause I don't want to lose any points. I just want to keep, keep it the same or keep gaining. So it would probably be in Natsuki at the end there. Cause he was the closest to me, but um, yeah, I mean, I want to, I want to beat all of them. Do you, do you feel like either any of one of those guys, like you, you, that you guys are kind of on a similar level, like, that any of those guys could have been the, you know, obviously, like, I know Benoit had a, a round where he, like, had heat exhaustion and stuff like that. Do you feel like any of those guys were, they were kind of on an equal field, like, that any one of them could have been second? Um, yeah. Um, it was, I think, I think it would have been, I think it would have been pretty close and came down to maybe one of the last rounds if uh, Harrison didn't have the bike trouble and stuff in the first round because, I mean, he came on strong at the end there. Um, So I think it could have came a little bit closer that way because he had, he went, he missed three motos off the start. So, I mean, that kind of sucked for him, but um, yeah, I think it made, maybe would have been a little bit closer or it would have been different, but, um, yeah. I've got to tell you, man, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with Kevin Benoit. Uh, he's like 34 years old. He'd been out of the series for, for about four years and came back and rode better than I would have expected, uh, you know, after being retired for a couple of years. I'm really impressed with that. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I definitely think, um, he surprised a lot of people, but like when I was, um, when I went and tested the bike for KTM, and it was like he was just getting back on the bike, and I'm like, dude, this guy rips still. <laughs> yeah. And um, my dad's like, no, he's no, nah, he's not gonna be close to your speed or whatever. He's gonna be a top top five guy. And then sure enough, he comes out and shows everybody what's up. But I mean, that was cool. Yeah, guys like that, they they know how to race. Maybe they don't have the the balls out intensity speed all the time but they know how to race they're smart they've been through it and yeah they they don't you don't lose that so that was really impressive i do what you mentioned testing the bike for ktm you signed to ktm this season right early or right before the season started is that a big deal i, that, I mean it is a big deal um yeah i signed with them um can't i can't remember exactly i think it was uh i think it was like the end of september or something last year um getting ready to go down south um and because i was we were there was that thing with uh phoenix honda and stuff trying to get down to the states and then uh, that didn't end up working out so um i called up ktm and was like hey do you want a you want a 250 rider for next year and they said yeah it's come on out test the bike see if you like it everything like that so i went out tested it and was like yeah good to go let's let's do it for next year um and then yeah we signed we took bikes home and pretty much headed to headed to the states from there um went to gps um rented a house uh stayed there for a couple months and then got to ride at like baker's factory and stuff for uh the photo shoot and i mean that was that was awesome an awesome experience for doing that yeah, what? How? What you said is an awesome experience, but getting to come down here and, and uh, Lucas Myrtle's your agent, so you got to spend some time with the Lawrence brothers and just coming down here with a lot of these uh, American riders and different facilities. What did you learn? What What did you take away from that? 
Honestly, I mean, I've been to the Lawrence compound a couple times. I was doing like 40s and stuff with Jet before he got into outdoor season. And uh, I really like riding with him. He's got a really awesome style and looks, I mean, just flows really well on the bike. And I I think you can learn a lot from him just even watching him. And then, uh, yeah, we got to watch the the Baker's Factory boys on Supercross a little bit. They didn't get to ride with us this time because we were still pretty early in the Supercross season. But, uh, yeah, it was cool watching them on uh, Supercross for sure. Yeah, so, you know, you we the, in that U.S. trip, you got to do the, the combine and stuff. Did did that go easier or was it harder than you expected? And did do you feel like out of that and the whole trip that you got what you came here to do out of it? Um, yeah, I did the combine at Red Bud. Yeah. Um, it was... Did I say Iron Man, I think? You didn't say. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Sorry, Ryder. It, it was good. Um, it, it was kind of a... I mean, we don't have, we don't have grates and they're super hard to find grates here. Like we had to get one from the guy that makes them for everyone. Um, and I, so I didn't get to do, I got to do, I did practice starts of the morning of Red Bud. And so my starts were terrible on Friday, but, um, I felt like my speed was good. I felt like I could run with, uh, Casey and them. Um, just needed to be better at starts. So now, now we got a great, now we're practicing that, um, getting ready for destinations right now. But yeah, we've been practicing, practicing starts on the great. And, uh, I feel like it's going pretty good. Um, it's just like, I mean, it's completely different than dirt and concrete. So it's just something to get used to. Yeah. I think overall, just again, finishing second behind a kid like Casey Cochran, who's used to the style of prep that happens in America and the, and the greats probably had some practice with it already. That's pretty good getting second because it's a very different environment coming to the United States and racing the way our tracks are set up and the size of the tracks and the the prep and all that. It's just so different than what you're used to. seems like you adjusted pretty quickly. Yeah, for sure. It's, I mean, everything's different the way, the way everything's run, the intensity of the guys on the first few laps, which I mean, I've never, never really been great at that my i normally got more speed at the end but um it's just another another thing to get used to on top of everything else yeah there's going to be a lot of that uh i'm going to ask you what about your 2024 plans here in a minute and there might be some adjustments coming but i want to stick with canada just for a minute uh i want to know how a guy like yourself and maybe the other canadian riders feel when the Americans come up like this year there weren't a lot Mitchell Harrison was up there and then Jimmy D came up for a little bit you know in years past Phil Nicoletti uh, Bogle was supposed to come does that bother you at all does it matter to you do you not really care you're, just, you're there to race it doesn't matter um yeah definitely uh, I I mean I like the competition and everything um it uh I like I mean, I think it's better for me. I'm young. I'm 17. I think it's better for me to have the more the more guys, the better for me. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yeah. I mean, having the definitely more guys, the better. The more faster they are, the better you're going to be. So, um, I definitely think I uh, I would rather have them come up, and I think it'd be better for the sport too. Like, our we don't have a we don't have a lot of uh, like good, really, really good upping, like coming or we don't have a big group. Like we have five guys that are good, but if we get a couple of Americans in there, um, it makes it, it makes it a little bit deeper and uh, it, it makes it so you have to be good all the time and you can't have, you can't have a bad race or a bad start or something like that, which I think I improved on a lot this year was my starts. Like my starts were way better this year. Um, and I think that's why I was more consistent. Like last year, I, I would get a third place start and then I'd get a 20th place start. So I think I improved on that a lot this year and I'm going to keep working on it, keep getting better. Yeah, I would say that's one of the key things when you come to the United States is there aren't really any slouches for the most part, and a bad start will ruin your day. So uh, we've seen that a lot with certain riders. So, yeah, that 
that's good. That's just what you're working on, and um, that's going to be a key, obviously, when you get down here. Uh, you got something, Scotty? Yeah, so, you know, we, we kind of asked uh, Galdi a similar question when we had him on earlier about, you know, do you do you feel like there's a, a pressure or an expectation to – to go compete with Dylan in the 450 class from the fans, and he said that he said that you really that he didn't feel that that you did. But do you do you feel like there will if you decide to come to the U.S. and not go move up to the 450 class? Do you do you feel like there will be any disappointment from the Canadian fans to see you maybe challenge Dylan, or you know, are you just looking forward to what's best for your career right now? Um. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to. I mean, I'd love to go out there and try and run with Dylan. I mean. He's got, I think, what, four? Yeah, four in a row right now at 450 class. Yep. So, I mean, I mean, it would be cool to go out and try and run with him, but um, I definitely think i got to do what's best for me. I'm still pretty young, so I think I want, I mean, I want to go to the States so, and try and uh, improve and run with the top dogs there. Yeah, well, let's get into that then. 2024, I don't know what you can tell us we know what the rumors are and, and um yeah i don't know w- what contracts are looking like as of yet what can you tell us about your 2024 season um yeah i mean we we're just kind of trying to figure something out i know lucas and jacob are working on something right now um that's as of right now that's the uh, goal is getting, or yeah, the goal is getting down there and racing um, futures um, for Supercross because I haven't had a lot of Supercross experience. So right after destinations, I'll be in somewhere to work on Supercross, um, and then uh, and then doing the full Pro Motocross uh, series. So yeah, I mean that's as that's right right now as of right now that's the plan. Um, doing going to start training on Supercross uh, after the nations, hopefully. That's great, man. We'll be glad to have you down here. That's one more talented rider, and it'd be cool to watch what you do. And, you know, some kids, some I say kids, kids, guys your age, maybe do a full season of Futures, or some of them, like uh, Danger Boy, they, they step right up after the first round. So it's hard to say, you know, I guess, depending on how you do. Whoops are going to be the biggest thing, I would imagine. Whoops are scary. Yeah, um, I've ridden a little bit of Supercross, um, just never had um, the proper or, like, stiff enough suspension for hitting whoops, so yeah. never got to really try, but I'm, I mean, last year down south, I, I mean, I was really, really wanted to ride it, um, gig him, just because Jess got hurt a couple times um, while he was riding Supercross. They were like, no, we need you. We need you healthy for the year, and we want you to win this year. So uh, they were like, no, we're we're not gonna do Supercross this year, which I mean, kind of sucked because I did want to ride it and I did want to learn it. But uh, it is what it is, and uh, we'll get down this year and we'll uh, work hard at it and get my feet wet in it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, so is is there not really much? I figured with you know with harsh winters that you guys have that I figured there'd be some kind of indoor scene of arena cross or something. Is there really not anything like that that you could have gotten your feet wet in younger in your career and up to the you know through the amateurs? Um, not like not really where I am. Like I know there's like arena cross in uh, like BC and stuff like that, but like that's like. 20 hours for me pretty much so okay. and we're always we were always down south chasing Loretta's and stuff on 85s and then I got that deal with um GDR and then it was um pretty much strictly uh Canada pro okay well, let's wrap this thing up with some motocross nations talk you were named to the team uh again for 2023 you were on the team last year uh, yeah, this is. I was telling everybody that I've talked to so far tonight on the show that I feel like this is one of the best motocross and nations teams for Team Canada. I really, I see you guys finishing inside the top ten. Just what are your thoughts on the team that you have going and what your chances are? Yeah, I mean, for sure, you're not wrong about that. Um, we definitely, I definitely think we got one of the one of the strongest um, teams we've had in a while. We're all coming in healthy so far. Um, 
And I think we all want to do, we all got the same goal. We all want to do good. So I think we're all going to put in a hundred percent and uh, we're not going to leave anything on the table. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm super, super excited to go. Can't wait. Super pumped for uh, Dylan and Jess and uh, super thankful for Courtney putting it all together, sitting out there every weekend, selling shirts and making it all happen. So, yeah, I'm super excited. Do you, do you feel like the uh, the track in France is going to be one that suits you well or hard packed? Hard packed. I, I know that y'all's stuff is kind of deeper. That is is that going to be something that you're going to transition well or, or how do you feel about that? Um, I I haven't seen the track too too much. Um, I know it's hard pack, um, which I love. My home track here in uh, Minnesota is like one of the hardest dirt you will ever find. Um, so I do, I mean, I love ruts. It's probably my favorite type of dirt. So, um, I'm really excited to see how the track is, how they prepped it over there. And I think if it's ruddy and good, I think I'll do pretty good. It's pretty technical too, which I like. I don't like, ha- I don't like, like super high speed tracks. I'm more of a technical, uh, kind of guy on a bike. I like, uh, the tight corners and everything like that. So I think, uh, they will like it. Yeah, you you know if you got through that first round in Edmonton, I feel like you'll be you'll be all right. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Edmonton was uh, it was uh, it was pretty dry and hard, but um, it turned out pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ryder, it was great talking to you, getting to know you just a little bit, and look forward to seeing you in the states. You know, come t- two thousand twenty four, and good luck at Motocross Nations. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, man. Take care, and we'll talk soon. Yep. All right. Bye. That was Ryder McNabb, two-time champion, not five-time. My bad. I got a got a little ahead <laughs> of myself. Like, Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, got a little ahead of myself. But Ryder McNabb uh, brought to you by WSA. So if you're listening in post, we're about well, or if you're on YouTube, we're about to play a pre-recorded interview with Dylan Wright. Um, I gotta get that thing queued up. But yeah, and then we'll come back. And Scotty and I, if you're on YouTube right now, Scotty and I will stay on, and we'll we'll chat with you guys in the YouTube comments. Talk about something for a second. We'll have to pull this audio up. Some, something yeah, for a second. SMX. SMX oh. is coming up. How you feel? Yeah, uh, there was some chat, some chatter in the chat room. There, They were talking about that they saw some footage of it and uh, mm-hmm. that it looks cool. I I mean, you know, I am more excited about NFL kickoff this weekend. Oh, dude. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a Cowboys guy. Niners Nation, baby. Yeah. Cowboy, you know, screw you know. Uh, you can say whatever you want. I mean, I mean Cowboys are not. Us, your Cowboys us, won't make the playoffs, and the 49ers will. That's just the way it works. Oh, we will. We'll, we'll well, you, you might make the playoffs. First we round. May not, uh, we may not beat y'all again. Y'all seem to be our kryptonite in the playoffs the last two years. It's been this, like the exact same game almost. They need to change the NFL script or anything. But, anyways, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, but I, I think it's going to be cool. I'm, I'm excited to see how it I'm plays out. I'm more excited today than I was last week. Like well, I'm, you're going to be there. Yeah, so. yeah, I leave Thursday morning. That's why one of the reasons we're doing a show on Tuesday night early mm-hmm. this week is because I've got some family stuff tomorrow night before I leave. Uh, right, before we get into before I play the Dylan Wright interview, I want to remind you guys, MotoXPodShow at gmail.com is our email for any, uh, if you want to do your 60 picks or Pro X highs and lows or any comments, questions, anything like that. We love that stuff. And I don't know that I mentioned last week that Travis Del Nicky is the guy that won the outdoors for our fantasy league. So I got to get him a prize out. I still got to get Garrett Rockley's prize out. Those are going soon. But uh, Travis Del Nicky is a former, or I guess he's still a privateer. He, he races some pro supercross and yeah, he won the league and I think he won industry idiots too. So I don't know that he really even needs a prize because he probably won a bunch of money, but I guess he's going to get a prize. No. Yeah. You don't get nothing because you don't play. Yeah. 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 Okay guys, Moving stay tuned. Uh, hang tight. <laughs> Uh, if you're on YouTube, we're going to play Dylan Wright. We'll be back after that. Our next guest of the night is brought to you by Guts Racing. Andy Gregg and the Guts Racing crew have been providing the best seats and foam in the industry for years. For 2023, they have added Kawasaki to their complete seat lineup, as well as the color teal to their gripper material options available. All new for 2023 are options for your e-bikes. They have complete seats for the Talaria and the Super 73 and covers for the Segway and Suron, and they have options for the Honda, KTM, and Husqvarna electric bikes. So visit GutsRacing.com and get the seat covers used by Malcolm Stewart, Ken Roxon, and many more. Tonight, Guts Racing brings us the Canadian 
national champion, four-time national champion, Dylan Wright. What's up, Dylan Wright? How you doing, man? Yeah, man, pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, finally have a weekend off here, so <laughs> um, that's kind of nice, just kind of hanging out at home and uh, getting a few things done around the house. You know, the old uh, the old honey-do list gets a little big throughout the season, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it does when you're busy all the time. Yeah, it, uh, you're, yeah you're newly married, right? Just had your one-year anniversary? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we had <laughs> one year actually on the day we were driving home from Ironman, so uh yeah one year into it and yeah like i said during the summer we so busy i don't like don't have time to do much around the house or nothing so right trying to get a few things done before uh you know start to get ready for nations i guess yeah that's all coming up and i want to talk about iron man but let's start with your your series five time champion right two or one 250 and four in a row in the 450 class dude are you getting bored uh no not bored i mean obviously um the guys uh we we keep i feel like we almost keep stepping the level up a little bit like we all kind of get better every year and um i feel like it kind of shows now on like the international side of things but um i mean the guys up here you know obviously yeah i've been winning a bunch but um it hasn't been easy you know they keep me on my toes and gotta gotta work my butt off to try and uh keep winning you know yeah, your motocross of nations teammate Jess Pettis. He 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 won a couple motos and kept it close. So so last year you all the motos, every moto undefeated, but still all all the overalls. I think nineteen in a row now overall. So yeah, it's been a pretty good few years for you. Yeah, honestly, the last well, really five years. I mean, the five championships now have been have been awesome, and now it, it, it's honestly almost just as hard to kind of keep it going because your expectations are so high that, you know, <laughs> losing, losing sucks. So you gotta, you know, you gotta keep like working harder and harder every time to, you know, cause the expectations there to just win. Yeah. And you're still pretty young. You're 25, about to be 26, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you've got a few good years left in you. Um, and I think you just signed a, a new three year deal. Is that three years starting in 24 or was this 23, the first of the years? Uh, yeah, so it would have been, this would have, this counts as a uh, year. So it'd be like two more years left on the uh, yeah, contract with Honda. So have you, yeah, GDR Honda, uh, who also had, uh, Lars Van Berkel on the team for a little while. I want to ask you about that in a little bit. That guy was rad. Yeah, that guy's such a good dude. I mean, he <laughs> came up from Southwick and just was going to race like the one national at Gopher. Mm-hmm. And then he ended up staying the week and then, uh, racing an extra weekend and, um, but he was just, yeah, he was just a rad dude to have around the crew. He's just so fun to hang out with. It's so easy going and kind of just went with the flow. He was, uh, yeah, it was cool to kind of hang out and ride with him. Yeah. And they got a podium. I don't know how close he was to you, but I wonder if the team was like, Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was go for the sand and he's obviously, you know, he's sure. a beach racer. So, uh, in the sand, yeah, he, I mean, it helped me out cause I think I went one, one on the day and he got in between a couple guys in the championship for points for me. So when he said he was staying, I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. So tell me, talk about the season. You talked about guys getting closer. We know that Jess kind of made it, you know, made it tighter. What were some moments where maybe the bit you had the bit most adversity this season? I heard you, I know you had a big crash at Walton, I believe. I don't know how close that was to where you could have almost got injured, but what, yeah. What were the most adversity moments? Yeah, I would honestly say the start of the season just honestly was a little rough, like a um, little rough around the edges. Obviously, you know, I went down to Florida and trained uh, Jet Hunter and Burner and those guys, but the start of the season just almost felt rusty because I, uh, I had my two ACLs and meniscus and everything fixed in the off season. So right after Nations last year, basically, I was off the bike for like six-ish months um so it was kind of like get back on the bike was riding and felt pretty good but then racing is always different so we we're just kind of fighting the bike a bit and then in the preseason testing um uh, we had a couple things that obviously didn't really go my way so we were struggling to like get some stuff figured out on the bikes right before the season we had like a setback almost right as the bikes were kind of getting on the truck to go to um out west and uh we we're just i was a little like rusty and like with the racing side just haven't raced in so long and then um yeah it just kind of it was tough i was making some uncharacteristic mistakes like early on and crashing and 
struggling a little bit. And then, but then we had about, I think the same amount of break as you guys did probably two weekends break, I think did like three weeks. And then, um, I had some bunch of testing stuff, um, throughout those weeks and just kind of got back to where I felt like I should be. And then the East coast went, uh, went quite a bit better. I was able to kind of ride like I, you know, know how to ride, I guess, or felt like, I mean, as a racer, it's tough, like you're winning, but then like, you don't feel like yourself on the weekend sometimes. So, um, for me, I was just happy to get back to where I was happy with the way I was riding and like finishing the motos. So, um, the end of the season, I would say was better, but the start, we struggle a little bit. Yeah. You talked about crashing a little bit and trying to get the bike <clears throat> figured out was, was the physical part of just kind of getting back in race shape, dealing with the re- knee recovery. Again, you said you had double knee surgery. So dealing with that, was that more difficult than getting the bike comfortable or, um, or was it a little bit of both? I think like the fitness side of, I've always been pretty good. Like my trainer and I work well together for, I mean, since I was a teenager and, mm-hmm. um, the, so the fitness side was pretty good. Like in Florida, um, like when chance basically switched out of supercross to just ride outdoors right after day or right before Daytona, right after Daytona, um, basically like we're doing motos and felt like my fitness was pretty good on the bike. But I think it's just like, you know, when you get into that race scenario um, and like, honestly, my bike setup didn't feel too bad. It's just when we were racing, you're just pushing an extra little bit, um, you know, maybe at the start of the races. And I was just, I was just pushing the front and I was just making some weird mistakes almost like mentally too. I just had like a kind of like mental lapse where I just make a mistake and I'm like, that shouldn't have happened. Like, Mm. um, but I mean, it's just kind of, it happens sometimes you know you go through a little little bit of struggle but um yeah we just worked through it and you know i worked uh worked pretty hard during the week to try and get everything you know back to normal and um just sometimes it just takes time i think you ask any of these guys and you know you take a lot of time off the bike and it just honestly just takes a little bit of time to get back to 100 percent. and obviously racing helps because you're racing week in and week out and um, you don't have those big gaps between gate drops cause you're weekend to weekend. So it all kind of comes quick and then, um, comes back pretty quick. So, yeah, well, clearly uh, you got all the overall. So I think you were fine. <laughs> didn't, didn't seem yeah. to be too bad. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't complain. I can't complain. Yeah. I mean, I done all, the, all the, all the overalls, but it was just a couple motos. I was kind of frustrated with myself, but I mean, I think as a rider, you know, we always strive for perfection. And when, you know, when you have something that doesn't go your way, you're like, dang, I wish I would have changed something. Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk about the Canadian Sears a little bit. I've I've never had the chance to come up to one of those races. I think I'm going to try to do that next year. But the, what I hear about the the pits and just the environment is how much fun it is and how everybody really seems to get along. What do you feel the Canadian Nationals do better than the U.S. Nationals? Is there anything that stands out? Uh, yeah, like you said, I think um, obviously the industry. I mean, you you know as much as anything, our industry is not super big uh, especially in canada and it almost takes it to another level where like we're all buddies for the most part like we're just you know we just feel lucky that you know, we get paid to ride our dirt bikes and go have fun and race each other and you know obviously you know you hit some guy on the track or whatever and you know you might not be friends for a couple of days but we <laughs> always generally figure it out but um yeah i just think the almost the atmosphere is like more laid back where you know we're all we're all having fun and um, obviously we care and want to win and we're doing everything we can. But I think a lot of the U S guys anyways, that come up would just say like, Hey, how much fun and like laid back our series is. Um, and I think it's good, but to a certain extent, like we, I, myself anyways, put, you know, blood, sweat and tears into this thing to win championships. So I take it very seriously on like the day of the race on race day. But, you know, after that, um, I think, you know, I think we're all able to kind of go out to the restaurant and hang out after. I like that. Yeah, it's it's serious, but maybe not quite as serious. Because, yeah, it could be a little – the fun is kind of taken out of it sometimes at the races in the United States because everybody is so serious. It's like, dude, we're racing dirt bikes still. Like, it's still fun. Yeah, there's a lot of money on the yeah. line. I get it. But uh, just sometimes you, you almost feel like the riders forget what they're getting to do for a living. Yeah, and, like, sometimes in Canada, I mean, I speak for myself, but, like, and I, some guys in the U S are starting to do this, but like, I, I'll bring my like camper and everything to the track and on the East coast weekends, like the ones that are close enough for me to drive to from home or that kind of makes sense for me to drive to, like, I'll bring my camper and hang out and, you know, have a campfire. It's, <laughs> nice. it's almost like a, you know, it's almost like a, 
chill kind of weekend and then you take it obviously seriously on race day and get your work done but um i mean i kind of just i like having fun and hanging out with my friends at the at the dirt bike track like you know we grew up doing for the most part yeah that sounds amazing i've got to get up there i gotta talk to michael Lindsay and get him to let me come to one of the races next year yeah you should either do like obviously east coast in my opinion um our facilities are we got some really nice tracks and stuff um so any of the east coast ones are pretty dialed in um you know, I'm from the East Coast, so I favor sure. the East Coast a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I th- I'm going to work on that. I, I've told uh, Lars Van Verkel that I needed to do that because I think, well, he's going to try to come back to the U.S. next year, but we were just talking about it. It's like, yeah, I got to get up there. And he, he talked about how fun it is. So I'm going to make a point to do that. Um, my next question, you're probably not going to want to give me like a straight answer or an honest answer, but do you, with your records, do you feel like you're, you're obviously on the Mount Rushmore of Canadian riders. Do you feel like you're the best ever? Uh, I don't put myself as the best ever, just being honest. Like, Mm -hmm. um, just, I grew up idolizing a few Canadian guys like JSR or Colton Fasciotti. And, um, obviously I was teammates with Colton and he taught me a lot. Um, you know, at my younger years with the team, because I've been with Honda, I think this was my seventh year with the team. So for the first three, I was with him and I still look up to those guys. So I wouldn't say it like I wouldn't say it like that. Obviously, you know, with championships and wins and stuff, I'm getting up there. But um, in my eyes, those guys are still kind of like my idol, and I could idol in Canadian moto. Um, obviously, you know that my you know Carmichael and those guys are my idol, like in the U.S. But we had those guys growing up where I watched them race, um, and it's kind of like Jet compared to like Ricky or something like that. Like Jet still looks up to Ricky, and I feel like that's kind of the same thing here. And I don't think as a racer, you ever get to the point where you're like, Oh, I think I'm better than them just because you grew up idolizing them as a kid. I think that's a fair answer. I'll accept that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to talk about coming to the United States. You came down for Bud's Creek and Iron Man, and you've done that a few times over your career and none of your results were ever, I'm sure what you, what your abilities show uh, until Bud's, but Iron Man was, or excuse me, until Iron Man, Bud's was a, a struggle and I believe you had a chain issue that took out an engine. Is that, I, I, I heard there was a picture, but I never saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Buds, buds definitely didn't go, um, <laughs> the way we wanted to, obviously. Um, yeah. yeah, there's first moto I was running, I was hit just inside the top 10, maybe 10 ish. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my chain derailed and went through my cases and wrecked. Wrecked the engine, wrecked the swing arm, uh, just caused a bunch of damage. And, like, we're – obviously, like, I'm pitted with HRC. Um, like, Lars, um, obviously, he's nice enough to let me kind of have a little home there to the side. Um, but, I mean, I'm not robbing their part. So, we have a very limited amount of stuff that we bring to, like, you know, a one-off race like that. And, I mean, I just bring – it's myself, my mechanic, my wife, basically. And, you know, we're the, our little team that's kind of getting things done and – I mean, there's not a ton of time between the motos you would know, especially to like swap engines and swing arms and stuff. So we, it, we just didn't have time between motos to get that done. And basically, yeah, loaded up and drove home and tried again an Ironman. Um, but I mean, you know, you know, the way it goes, sometimes it's racing. It's just unlucky stuff happens. And yeah. I'm just thankful it didn't happen at a Canadian round. And, you know, I would have been out at whatever, how many points that is in the championship, 25 points. So I'll take it at a one-off race. Yeah, I like the staying positive thing. I know, I'm sure you wanted to have better results. And, of course, at Ironman, you went 8-9 for 8th, which I think was really great. How important, does it even matter to you, ego-wise or whatever, coming down to the United States and wanting to put in good results? How important is that? I think it's really important for me anyways. Um, You know, obviously in Canada, um, we do have our own series, and I would do great up here. And um, Yeah, I think it's important just because – as a Canadian guy, um, you know, like Jeff came down as well, but as, you know, as a champion up here, you almost feel like the pressure of like, you need to go prove that our series and our country is like on the radar with, you know, some of the top guys in the world. So it's, and it's a lot of pressure, but at the same time, you don't feel the same pressure as like getting points. You just feel like you need to have something to prove speed wise. And I got Ironman. I think I like, I was happy with my speed, obviously, uh, I had come through the pack both motos and the second moto I was very frustrated just with um I was running right behind AC I think fifth or sixth and I was trying to make a pass on on AC but then I just 
hit a bump the wrong way trying to switch out of a route and it tucked and then I kind of got bucked sideways and went down and I was just kind of pissed off at myself because I <laughs> could have been a little bit more patient but I was just kind of in the moment and like Anderson I was trying to follow Anderson through because he had some good lines and had a good pace so I was trying to you know kind of latch on to him because I really thought I could get a top five in that moto which I would have been pretty happy with but I mean, yeah, I say it quite a few times in this interview, but it's got a racing. It happens. And, you know, I just kind of pick myself up and see how far we could kind of make it up the, make it up the standings. And yeah, I think eight, nine was, was on the day, but I think with a good start in the first moto and not me having that mistake, I think we could have been, you know, fifth, sixth, but it's, uh, sometimes that's the way she goes. For sure. Yeah. Your, your lap chart for moto one showed you 18th, I think, uh, for the first lap, I don't know. You were probably maybe even farther back than that out of the gate. But, yeah, passing 10 guys and battling with those definitely showed your speed. You look good, so it's cool. I, I would love to see you down here more, which I know that's not in the plan right now. Have you considered it after this next deal's up? If you go win a couple more championships, would you like to come to the United States and try to do a full season? Yeah, I've always wanted to um, do the outdoor side of things. Supercross is a little bit of a stretch just because, I haven't done a ton of it. Like I do some of the one-off races like in Paris or um, like, I know I was supposed to do the world supercross in Vancouver and stuff like that. Like I'll do some of those, but doing the whole supercross series, like I, I would need like a full support of a, you know, a pretty decent sized team and everything to do it that way. But the outdoors um, or GPs or anything like that is like, I really intriguing to me and I will, I would love to be able to do them. Um, one day on, you know, factory equipment and have that chance. Cause it's always been kind of like a dream as a kid, but, um, I honestly can't complain with, you know, the setup and the bikes and everything that we've got up here. So it's kind of, you know, you kind of go where, um, kind of life takes you a little bit. And if that, op- if the right opportunity came up in the U S I'd obviously love to do it and race 12 rounds because we only do a couple one-off races um, in the U S and, um, I've tried to do them as much as I can. And it's just kind of, it's tough jumping into, you know, this, that series at the end of the year where these guys have been all been racing each other all year. And like our tracks are totally different up here. Our tracks are quite like a lot smaller in terms like lap times are the same, but it's a lot tighter and a little bit slower, um, of tracks. So our setup's totally different. So to be able to actually like focus on 12 rounds or 11 rounds of, outdoors and focus on getting the bike set up for those tracks instead of up here i think i'd be able to do quite a bit better as well just by racing those conditions a little bit more and getting used to the racing down south i really think that i could do even better than where i'm at right now but honestly that would just you know take time and would take the opportunity to do it yeah yeah i could see that definitely just coming down for a couple and trying to get prepared is very difficult you talked about the difference in the track styles what about how it shapes up not I mean, with first of all, just the prep. Do they prep differently, and then how does the ruts and the bumps ch- um, shape up differently? Is it, are they bigger, or just space apart, different? Just kind of talk about that. Yeah, like in Canada, um, tracks are a little bit tighter, so you have breaking bumps that start a little bit earlier, but they don't get as big. Whereas the U.S., they're a lot bigger and deeper, and the ruts are deeper. Just they tend to till the tracks a little bit more um than we do um but i don't know about you but this year like anyways the two rounds that i did it was different track prep than what i had raced us in the past like i don't know if that's like a new thing they were trying to do this year but it almost felt to me like they weren't ripping it as deep and they were kind of leaving like the hard surface on the bottom that's my opinion on the last two tracks i haven't obviously i watch on tv but it's hard to tell but I honestly thought they haven't ripped it as deep and it was a little bit more than to what maybe we're used to up here. But honestly, just like the the depth of the ruts and the bumps and everything, you know, we don't get as much of that up here. It's more, um, it's a little bit just slower. The tracks are tighter. So you don't get as big of like those long, deep ruts with like big holes and bumps and them type of deal. Yeah. I did hear from a number of riders at different times throughout the season that it was, there was a hard base under where they ripped it. They weren't ripping it as deep. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of yeah, hard to say. I remember in the, I remember in the past, like being able to at least run a paddle all the way till after about the first moto and then switch into like a regular tire. But like this year at buds and Ironman, like I went out for first practice and I came back and I was like, take that thing off. Like we don't, we don't, we don't really need it anymore. Like it's already down to the base and it's too slippery to use it. And I know some guys were still sticking with the paddle, but like in, in my opinion, I was like, we don't even need that thing. Like they, the track 
wasn't ripped as deep and it always had that like really hard base i don't know if they're trying to make like better racing with a track like that or not but i i felt like they've been well those two tracks were prepped different from when i had raced them in the past yeah i've heard again i've heard that over the last couple of years they've been prepping them a little different i do think they're trying to get rid of the slot car thing and they're just yeah each track is trying to figure it out and i think each track has their own person doing the prep so it it definitely varies but i thought buds looked good from a distance and uh and like I, watching buds that was my first time there i just thought i'd like to i would enjoy riding that track it looked like a lot of fun iron man kind of scares me <laughs> yeah buds is sick just with the hills everything's pretty natural so it's kind of it flows very good like up and down the hills um it's like pretty natural or yeah iron man's a little bit more like kind of man-made and there's you know some um i wouldn't even say like the peakier obstacles like everything's pretty peaked up at iron man they yep. make everything pretty steep but so is but like a few of the jumps at buds i was like walking the track on friday i guess and i was like damn these things are pretty <laughs> steep to like from buds from like what i remember racing because i even raced like some uh loretta lynn stuff there when i was a kid and i was like i don't remember this stuff being this steep but uh but yeah it's a fun track to ride like it just flows super well yeah, definitely. I'll be back at Ironman for the GNCC here in a couple months. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't know that I'll ever get a chance to ride the moto track. Who knows? I, I, I'd like to do that. That'd be something that'd be cool to go around and get a chance to ride each track. But yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I'm scared of that. Yeah, like the, that the, the big Godzilla one. Little, I'm out, man. But, uh, yeah, but God, yeah, but Godzilla was big this year, and my like it was way bigger when I raced it the first year on a two DF, like maybe seven years ago. It was like a big double, whereas now it was like it was pretty mellow, to be honest. You'd be good. You'd be all right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. You you never see me ride. You'd have to see me ride first. You, I know you've heard stories. So <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Yeah, uh, I don't know. There's a bit. You know, I'm getting old too. So the bigger the bigger the hucks, I'm kind of backing it down. Yeah, yeah. No, I guess maybe that'll come with time. I mean, I'm still young and just just the right amount of dumb, I guess. Yeah, know? right. You're still sending it. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about motocross and nations you were uh voted into the team or picked on the team along with jess pettis and uh Ryder mcnab who it's a very talented canadian team I, I always get excited for team canada over the last few years i've just i'm always excited to see you guys because it's just a fun group i like to come to the truck and hang out and courtney lloyd of course was team manager a few different times and it's just always a fun atmosphere with you guys I'm really excited to see what you guys get to do this season or this year in Erne. How do you feel about it? I feel really good, to be honest. I think um, we have a great team going. Um, I, Courtney is obviously running it again, so we'll have a – we have a really good program with – so she did a bunch of fundraising, I think, so we have some funding behind it. and It's going to be pretty legit of a program, so I'm really looking forward to it. And Obviously, you know, when we go overseas, it's always fun. I did a bunch of GPs and stuff, so it's always – I'm excited for that one. I get to go see a bunch of my friends that I only really see once a year at, at this nation. So it's kind of, it's kind of nice to see a bunch of those guys. And then uh, of course, you know, it helps when um, the three riders, the three best riders this year are going um, and are able to go and aren't injured. And um, you know, with teams and everything, I know the U S is kind of a gong show right now, but we have our like in points. If you look at points and riding this year, the three best guys going. So, um i think we have a good shot of doing well and we just uh i'm looking forward to it i obviously pride myself and you know you kind of got the country riding on it and um <laughs> it's just a fun race and just enjoy going to going to ride my dirt bike and i think france is one of the pretty big ones with big fans like a big crowd and everybody there so i think it's going to be it's going to be one for the books i would imagine yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting. We were talking about going, and now Michael, Lindsay, and I are both going to stay home. I think ML has a test to do, and it's just so much travel. And I'm going to Steve's ride day in Millville like the week after. I, was, I just I don't know that I want to fly home on Monday or Tuesday and then turn around and drive straight to Millville and try to get my work done. So I decided to stay yeah, here. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, but I yeah you might you might regret. I hear that one, the one in France that day I've heard is like one for the books every yeah. year. There's a ton it's wild and fans are gnarly i guarantee you i'm gonna yeah i guarantee you i'm gonna regret it like once i hear all the stories i'm gonna be really bummed out but i bet if i went i'd be dead tired and so uh, i was gonna say i was gonna say your your mental mental game would be beat (laughs) yeah exactly how do you feel about hard packed tracks are you pretty good there uh, on that type of condition because i hear or i guess our is very hard packed 
Yeah, it's like I've watched a bunch of video. I've never had the chance to ride there, but I watched some video and yeah, she's pretty hard pack and hilly. Um, but yeah, I think we'll be okay. We have some tracks up here that are pretty hard packed, so I've been trying to kind of stick to those now that uh, all the other racing is kind of done and just trying to get some practice and get good bikes set up for there. Um, it's just the hills. We don't have really hills like that um, here to practice, so mm-hmm. just getting used to that. But I think I think we'll be good. You know, we what's nice about Nations is we get about 40-minute practice in the morning. So, like, you get to learn the track and actually do your get good bike set up and everything down while we're there. And Courtney actually rented a track that's not too far from there that we can go practice, I think, on Tuesday. So we'll be able to ride a little bit before the race as well, which is kind of nice over there and make sure because we got to run different fuel and a few things. So um, it's kind of nice. We'll get to ride and make sure everything's good to go. And I, I'm looking forward to it. I think we got a good team, and I think uh, we'll hopefully be able to turn some heads. I hope so. I'm looking forward to watching you guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap this thing up with just a couple more questions. Um, well, let's let's just go with this. This is something I've been asking guys the last few weeks on my show, just kind of to close out. Why do we race? Uh, <laughs> there's too many reasons, really. I mean, um, for our mental sanity, probably. I think a lot of us, if we didn't race and have that to focus on, we'd all go nuts. So uh, I'm going to put that there as number one. And I, I personally race just because I love it. Like I love riding my dirt bike. And, you know, even though our series is over, I still go to the practice track and go work on stuff and try and get better. It's just, I think we're addicted. So we just, it's like a, it's like a drug. We just can't get enough. That's pretty accurate. I, I feel you. Um, yeah. Last <laughs> thing, I guess, how much time will you get off before MXD? And I know you're going to be riding some, but are you going to get to do anything fun? You get a little vacation with the wife, anything cool? Yeah, so we're actually, I leave on Sunday, whatever today, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> I leave tomorrow for uh, going on our honeymoon because obviously, you know, we talked that we've been married for a year, but I haven't had time just after, you know, we got married and then I had to get ready for Nations last year and then surgery and then I had to get back on the bike and race. Um, so we finally have a little break right now. So take my wife on a go on our honeymoon that we haven't had time to do. We're going to Greece for 10 days. Um, so we'll go relax a little bit and then um yeah get back to get back to work when we get back until nation so a little bit of break here but um yeah i think it'll be good for the body we've been i've been going pretty hard since uh since february so it'll be nice to have a little break here and go four nations and get rested up and then back at it hammer down awesome man well congratulations on an amazing season an amazing career so far and yeah good luck at mxdn it's been a lot of fun talking to you i appreciate your time yeah, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, having me on the podcast. And uh, yeah, I mean, thanks for being a thanks for cheering for Team Canada. Anyways, obviously you had the other you know the other guys on, and uh, yeah, I think people should uh, people should get excited. I think we're gonna do we're gonna do well, and uh, yeah, just keep grinding. That's that's the way she goes. Anytime, man. Yeah, I'm always a fan of Team Canada. Love you guys. Really uh, pulling for you to do well, and we'll talk again soon, man. Thanks. Yeah, yeah awesome. No, thank you. All right, talk to you later, Dale. Cheers. All right, see you, buddy. That's Dylan Wright, brought to you by Guts Racing tonight. It's always fun having the Team Canada guys on every year right before MXDN and giving our Moto brothers up north a little support and a little time on the show, a little love. They're uh, they're great riders, tons of fun to watch a Canadian series. That It just seems like a really, really fun time to go to, and I do want to get up there. I mean that. All right, guys, now it's time to get back to the live show. Okay, we are back, and we're going to roll right into our Luxon MXGP of Turkey. Scotty, I hope you're up to date with what happened in Turkey. What? What? Like the sandwich? Yes, turkey sandwich. Okay. Yep, yep. When it comes to triple clamps, suspension, and chassis parts, there's no comparison. Luxon MX makes the best parts you can buy. Luxon's advanced engineering background and techniques allow them to develop products that are unlike the rest, Lighter and stronger with optimized stiffness to enhance your riding comfort and precision. And Luxon products are designed, engineered, and made in the USA. Check them out online at www.luxonmx.com. All orders of $100 or more ship free within the continental U.S. And you can save 10% on all their products with promo code MOTOXPOD. Now, if you were on the chat with us and during that, con- that interview with Dylan Wright and everybody was talking crap about me reading promos perfectly, Read that. Read that one pretty well. No mistakes. Oh, I, didn't even, I didn't even pay attention. Nobody was paying attention. <laughs> That's great. Luxon MXGP review. 
of Turkey, I really only got a couple points I want to t- touch on. Um, guys are really overall. My guy finally got a win overall. Mm-hmm. I sort of made a joke with ML earlier. He said I was going to use it for social scoop on uh, an Instagram post that I was sharing that, you know, guys are one and, oh, don't tell me this championship's over. Kind of being sarcastic because obviously it's it's over. But he thought people might think I was being serious and <laughs> that I just didn't know what the hell I was talking about because the joke didn't translate. But damn it, guys are one. I was stoked. I like the track, though. I, I, from TV, it looked like fun. I mean, I see. I say that about three or four of the tracks so far over there. Yeah. That one looked fun to me. I don't know. It was kind of cool to to see, like, a like giant towers in the background of a motocross track. Yeah, like, yeah, That's yeah. pretty, like, a rare scene. You don't see that very often. So, to see, like, a populated area inside, like, a motocross track inside of that almost, that was kind of cool. But uh, I thought it was cool to see... I didn't watch in grave detail, but I thought it was cool to see a lot of the big names back. Um, I know in the in the in race two, Hurlings, I saw him. He kind of got like knocked off the track. Okay, you didn't see that? No, I, I, I guess I missed that. Yeah, he yeah he go back and watch the broadcast. He he gets. I was watching him and he like they don't. Even, I didn't even think the broadcast caught it. I just happened to like was be focused on him on the start, and I saw that he like. He didn't get a good jump. He went inside, and then he was outside on the next one. And coming out of that corner, he kind of went off the track, and then he had to like work his way back up. So, but you know, it was cool to see all those guys in there. And and uh, you said that the championship's basically over, but it can't can't uh, Febra still technically catch him? Because they were talking about on the on the thing like they're like, oh, it's valuable day for points for Febra. So it would take a lot. I I, I Prado had a pretty bad day. And, you know, obviously it tightened up a little bit, but, um, yeah, I think it's very, very unlikely. I, I, I don't, if, unless something catastrophic happens to Prado, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah, I'm looking, yeah, Hurlings wasn't even there. I didn't think he was there. Yeah, Hurlings wasn't even there. So, I don't know. This is sort I, of like I, a Canadian I reviews. I never know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was like, I, could, I, thought, I was wondering I if I missed back. something. No, no, I didn't think. Yeah, I didn't think he was there. But did, I was like, did I miss something? Did they replay CBS Sports? Screwed me. I think. Do I you think, think you they, watched the whole? So did, you don't even remember? Because you didn't remember guys are winning either. We talked about that earlier. No, I saw guys are win. I thought you. Okay. So no, you, I thought Prado won the first moto. I don't that's know. That's where you. Yeah, you were confused. Dude, I don't, you I, must have watched. I went into the Matrix <laughs> or something. Be a dude, great Lux on NXT. Well, I don't know what I watched. Yeah, so Geyser wins. Prado's still leading. I think Prado is, uh, I don't remember exactly what the points lead is. It's pretty significant. I don't, yeah, it's not, Favre's not going to win this championship. It's, Prado just has to stay safe and be smart. There was some really good racing, though. There were some great battles in the 250 class, or the MX2 class, as always. Adamo and Ligenfelder had really good, like, first motos and then struggled in moto two. Just, it's just really great racing, right? Um, yeah, like Adamo's up by 48 points. And Everett wins his second race in a row, his second overall in a row. So I, Liam Everett, as I've said before, is really coming on strong in that series. So I'm, I'm already kind of looking forward to 2024. Uh, you know, there were some, you know, Lucas Conan got hurt. I think he had some shoulder issues and didn't finish. So there were some negatives, but just as always, great racing. And then some guys like Renault. And Seaware had bad motos, which is really weird just seeing them so far back. But it was just kind of really inconsistency, as we've seen throughout a lot of the rounds with certain riders. But that really, my highlight is guys are getting the overall. That was big for me. I think it's big for him, his confidence, and kind of building back into 2024 as he's coming back from that injury. Yeah, it was because it, it was like an exact year since he won his last race at that place. So that was, that was kind of cool to see. Yeah, I, again, MXGP is just a lot of fun to watch. I wish... Like the time difference kind of makes it messed up because I get up Sunday morning and it's already over. But it's it's I usually just I have to find time to watch it. It's usually not till Monday before I get to watch it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just think that track looked like a lot of fun. I feel like I could go there and ride that track and not end up in a hospital, Michael Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, they were just really ripping into me in the YouTube chat during yeah. that last Dylan Wright interview. Yeah, I was, you, I was you getting, didn't. You didn't. I was talk, getting bullied a little bit. You didn't talk any crap about anybody. No, else. I no, would never. Yeah, you would never. I would do never. That. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Sport and Wood was hating on me, and I mean, my, I'm kind of. He wasn't even really hating on you. It's kind of like you know, like how sports. I, I always sports make, always got my back. I always make fun of you for crying, and I kind of almost cried. I mean, yeah. had he been you talking to you? Like. Had he been talking to you on YouTube like that? You had been full in tears. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Terrible. He, sports got sports got my back though. Yeah, he was he was hating a little bit, and then ML, you know, I mean, my 
ML is my manager, and I, I don't know that it's appropriate for him to be making fun of me on social media. He's supposed to be my superior, and he's just degrading himself by making fun of me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I've got to re- write a written report to HR after this show. The, the biggest thing I got out of the whole chat thing was uh, we, trying to get ML to – to buy the S, the the World WSX series, he I mean he already had a race team, so we learned from those mistakes. Yeah, and how'd gonna, that go? Yeah, we learned, and we're gonna we're gonna buy a series. You and I are gonna be the announcers, and we're gonna we're gonna make things happen. <laughs> I, I want nothing to do with <laughs> that. I'm out. Okay, Mot- Motul emails founded in 1853. Motul is a one 100- hundred. Emails were founded in 1853. Huh. Just kidding, I'm What'd sorry. you say? I said emails were founded in 1853. No, Motul was founded in 1853. Oh. The Motul emails, yes, they were founded <laughs> in 1853. Motul is a 170 year old company that is present in over 160 countries. For decades, Motul has developed high performance synthetic ester based lubricants by selecting esters over other high performance synthetic based stocks and combining them with an innovative. I quit. You didn't even you didn't even mess up. I did. I said innovative tit. I, I screwed it up. I, I didn't even notice. Just you keep know going. What? You, innovative. You, Additive package. Motul has created a perfect synergy. This most advanced ester core technology allows the maximum power output of the engine without comprom... Comp- comp- oh, we're going to lose them as a sponsor. <laughs> I can't even say Sorry, it. Sorry, Motul. We love you guys. <laughs> Compromising reliability and wear. Next show, you do all the sponsor reads. Okay, we're lining that up right now. You, you always say that. You're doing all of them. You can find this in I the entire be here next Motul, week, so. the next show that we do here. Okay. The entire Motul Power Sports product lineup at their online website, shopmotul.com, and use code VITAL20 to receive 20% off your order of $50 more, or go to your local dealership and ask for Motul products. Motul email this week. Uh, this comes from John. What is your biggest pet peeve? Uh, Do you have one that stands out? Because I've got my list. You go first. Yeah, so I went with bad grammar. Is it people asking how old people are? Driving too slow. I'll add people asking <laughs> about how old everybody is. And then I said, just about anything requiring me to have patience. Those are my pet peeves. Yeah. Um, well, it kind of puts me on the spot. I don't really. People making fun of me and making me sad. And then I would have read those perfectly if they hadn't made fun of me. Yeah. Um, my biggest pet peeve is just people, just ignorance. People just being like, so you're always upset with TJ. <laughs> no, I mean TJ, all right, but uh, um, I don't know. Yeah, that that was. I'm really trying to like work not on t- not getting bothered by little things, oh, wow. like working on my anger issues. Aren't you a good person? I'm trying. Look at to you be, trying to be better. I'm trying to improve myself, but uh, yeah, it's I don't know, like people doing. And I can't say anything because I've done some dumb stuff driving, but people, people, yeah, people driving bad or just like people like not respecting other people. I've had this rant before when it, and I'm getting, I'm already getting fired up <laughs> when you drive in the left hand lane, you go 55 miles an hour or you go the same speed as a person in the right hand yeah. lane that's side by side with you and you just won't freaking pass him. Yeah. And I've on the interstate, it, nothing I, that I can think of. <laughs> stresses me out or pisses me off more than a trucker trying to pass another trucker at a half mile an hour faster than yeah, the other trucker. Yeah, I know. It's like, dude, just... And there's just, 20 y'all fucking are, cars behind you, yeah. and neither one of you will lift. Move over! <laughs> Get out of the way. God, it makes me mad. Yeah, you're about to drive all the way to Charlotte, too. I'm sure that won't happen at all. Yeah, I, I, when I get there and there's... The bikes in pieces because I, uh, I mean I made it to California a couple times so Charlotte shouldn't be a problem. It, I'll I'll lose my temper at least five <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah. Th- there you go. There yeah. you go. Uh, there's some pet peeves. X brand has quietly grown into one of the premier goggle choices available, using some of the most grueling conditions by the GNCC XC2 champion Lyndon Snodgrass, ATV Pro champion Bryson Neal, Craig DeLong, Josh Strang, Grant Baylor, many others. X brand goggles. Visit xbrand.com for all the color waves and different styles. They have the EKSS, the Lucid, the new Lucid, also used by some riders that might be named Hunter Lawrence with a different strap. And they might have just won a championship with that goggle. That is a uh, pretty awesome X-Brand Lucid. They, they're they some of the best goggles I've ever worn in my life. Which you gonna, what are you I was going to say, how, how come they can't like put like a tiny X-Brand thing on there? Like, You'd have to ask the people that write the contracts. I don't know. Because like probably you, the Alpine Star doesn't want that. Well, you think the X-Brand would have got, gotten something out of that? I mean, They got paid. 
Well, I know, but like they can't get like a little, just tiny little X on there. <laughs> nope, apparently not. No. Uh, okay, so the X Brand Forum check in this week's question. I noticed this earlier. It is the topic is by Gator Seven Twenty Four. Is Web Racing Super Motocross? I can't even say that. What what is going on? You didn't say anything wrong. I did. No, maybe you, I'm here. You just shine light maybe, to problems think, that don't even really exist. Maybe you're right. I think I'm just because like you'll do something and you'll be like, head, dude. you'll be like, I'm I'm I messed this up, and then I'll be like, dude, like nobody would have noticed okay. until you said something. Is Web Racing Super Motocross? If so, when does he announce his bike? Um, yeah, the the list came out today. Check out Vile MX for that. But he is racing. He will be on Star Yamaha. Mm-hmm. And it's exciting. Um, yeah, a couple other people uh, commented on it. But really, that's, I just, yeah, that's a big deal. I think Webb coming back on Star, that's going to be pretty cool. I don't, you know, who, I think he's going to do well. I, yeah. It, will there be a big adjustment period? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say he goes out yeah. and, well, you have to hear my Would, do you, you have to hear my 60 picks. But I think he's going to do very well on that Star Yamaha at opening round. I, I think that he will mesh very well with the Star. The star bike. I think he's going to go back. I mean, he 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 grew up on that team. You know, he won his he won his uh, lights championships on that team. Yep. So I think he's going to. I think he. I think his uh, attitude and Bobby Reagan's mesh very well. I think the team is going to f- mesh well with him, and I think he's going to be very well adapted to these style of tracks. I think he does good in Supercross, and I think he's going to adapt well to a new style of track. I think he's going to find ways to uh, excel in that and so you know uh, the question i was going to ask you but i'll go ahead and say is like i i wouldn't be surprised if i'm not going to say he's going to go out and like dominate and win but I, I i think that he'll be in the mix more than people may expect him to be mm-hmm. so I, well, that's how my take on it when we get to our 60 picks you'll you'll hear exactly how i feel about cooper webb okay. going into charlotte before we do that we're going to do our prox highs and lows Rooted in racing from motocross to off-road, supporting teams like Pro Circuit Kawasaki, my team, and Pro Yamaha, <laughs> and SLR Honda. Prox has been dedicated to supplying quality components since 1975. From complex jobs like an engine rebuild to simple maintenance like filters, chains, and sprockets, Prox aims to bridge the gap between OE quality and affordability. Find Prox at your local dealer or online retailer. Visit prox-usa.com to search parts for your bike and follow Prox Racing Parts on social media. Prox highs and lows. Do you have yours ready to go? Nope. Nope. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, my highs are Tim Geyser winning overall and Triumph coming to fruition finally. We've seen the bike. I honestly, seeing the bike... Okay, that's cool. But them coming to the sport, that's my high right now. Just another OEM, as we talked about earlier. Really excited about that. Uh, really happy for that. And then my lows, Lucas Kunin getting hurt. Uh, did, did not finish, did not start. That was that sucked. That kid was having a good season. And I don't know the extent of his injury. Uh, I know he, his shoulder looked like it might have been have, have some might have had some issues. Haven't heard any updates, but I hope he's okay and, and back for the next one. So those are mine. What you got? Yeah. Man, I really don't have don't have any. Um, well, I guess I'm my, gonna, hey, can I add a low to my, my my lows would be that Hurley's wasn't racing and I thought he was. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a pretty big. Suck. That's a low. <laughs> I I did I I it's funny. I, well, when you said it, I was like, did I miss something? Like, there's no way I missed that. What's funny is I made that mistake <laughs> and I've been, and I've and I've been completely sober for over a, well over almost two weeks now, and so. Whoa, wait a minute. Do we have, do we need to drug test you before the show? What are we I, talking about? No, I was like, I've just been, I've been sober, so okay. from everything, from, uh, and I still have just thought I was, mis- thought I was seeing hurlings out there, so <laughs> who's, who, that's my low, I guess, oh, okay. and my high that's was that, I, my high was that I wasn't high, I guess. <laughs> All right, moving just on. Just kidding. <laughs> Six D picks for Charlotte, Super Motocross, round one, since its inception almost 12 years ago, 60 Helmets, has been dedicated to the relentless pursuit of brain protection. From the original ATR-1 to its successor, the ATR-2, the goal was to develop a revolutionary design concept utilizing creative forward-thinking technology that would change the market and improve the safety capabilities of the sports helmets. The helmet is the most important piece of protection equipment you will purchase, so visit 6dhelmets.com or go to your local dealership and ask for 6D. Try them on. I promise you will not be disappointed. 6D picks for Charlotte. Do you want to give me your podium for the 450 class? Uh, I'm going to go... 
uh, Jet, Chase, Cooper. Okay. Swap first and second. That's my picks. I went Sexton, J- uh, Jet, Cooper Webb. Cooper Webb. Cooper Webb. Well, wait, will, will Roxon be there? No. Nope. He won't? No. Nope. Okay. I don't believe he's racing that, no. Okay, then, yeah. That's my picks. Um. Yeah, I don't. Uh, Maybe Anderson in the side that third was, spot. See, I would have went with uh, Adam was one of my thoughts. With, with, could he do well? Will he yeah. do well? I do think he's getting better. Well, throughout what the about album. what about who do you, who do we think will make it in? That's like has to go through the LCQ. That have, like, yeah, I don't have the list in front of me, so yeah. I don't really know. Um, me neither. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, we should talk about that. <laughs> Or should have had ML on because he he posted the list have, today. Uh, yeah. yeah, he posted the list today, and I don't remember. Um, talk about who? Talk about two fifties. Who you think is going to do well? I'll pull up the list. Um, who, you, who do you got for two fifties? Man, I really want I really want Fortner to be able to build some momentum. You mm-hmm. know, he was doing he was doing well, and then he had that crash at Ironman, but I think he didn't get hurt from it, so I think it'll be all right. I want to see Fortner do good. Um, I think that I mean obviously Hunter's the guy to beat. I I don't see him really getting beat. I'm curious to see Hunter's effort level. How serious is he really taking this? I mean, I think that that kind of this opportunity is great for him to kind of crown himself the guy going mm-hmm. into the four fifties. So I'll I'll be serious or, or curious to see how uh, how hard he pushes and how well he goes. You know, we know Hayden's going to send it. Um, I think he's going to be one to watch, obviously. But, I mean, the 250 class has been stacked all year, and it's going to be stacked in this, and I think it's going to be great racing. So I'm going to say Hayden wins it, this, the SMX series part. You like, think he, I think he wins? He, yep, I think he does. I'm going to say Hayden. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay, but The points factor into it still, right, though? Like, yeah, so I, I probably probably should check that out before too much. But, no, I think I think Hayden's the guy that I'm going to go with. As, I, I, as far as, like, getting overalls, I think he – I, I, I'm going to say he wins Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he gets off the podium. That's going to be my picks. Uh, 450 LCQ guys. Are you ready? Phil Nicoletti, Kevin Morans, Justin Starling, Josh Cartwright, Jerry Robin, Jeremy Hand, Bryce Shelley, Jace Kessler, Max Miller, Devin Simonson. So, yeah, Phil Is Nicoletti. Is Phil going for the 250s or 450s? He's in for the 450s, but I bet he'll ride 250 in that, actually. That's probably a good point. Let's see where he's at, if he's even um, – Wow. Yeah. We should have looked into this a little bit more. <laughs> oh, well, we, we don't get, um, they yeah, get I don't even see track. him on the list. So don't see him on the 250 list at all. Which, so, yeah. I'm, I, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're mo- just uneducated. Moving on. <laughs> we're uneducated. But um, Kevin Moran, Justin Starling, those are the guys that I, I see doing well in, in the 450 LCQ. And then the 250 LCQ, we got Blows, DK, Cullen Park, Austin Forkner, Cody Shock, Josh Varees. Yoder, uh, yeah. So, I think of those guys, Forkner was yeah. probably the favorite. Um, Cullen, Cullen was riding really well, so maybe Cullen. Yeah. So, the, so they do they do a race, and that puts them last. They have to do it every single round, right? They have to. Yeah. He has to qualify. Yeah. Yeah. So even if he goes, let's say he 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 qualifies and and he wins, that doesn't give him enough points to automatically be into the next one. That's kind of. We should have really talked about this SMX well, questions and gotten ML on for this because he's definitely more up to date on all this. He, I think he did the press conference they had today, and yeah, yeah. He, he'd have more. I'm kind of just, talk, I'm just this whole thing is confusing a little yeah. bit going into this first one. So I think we're learning as we're going. And, we need to straighten us out first first round. Well, uh, we'll probably get straightened out by ML here in a little bit. He'll probably be like, "Listen, you two idiots, <laughs> you idiots, yeah, you idiots. bunch of idiots, <laughs> bunch of hosers." He's he just did the chat <laughs> emoji of uh, the. Oh, well, there you go. So perfect. We're. We're, we're making him proud. I love it. You know what? I feel like it's time to wrap this damn show yeah. up. I want to thank all of our sponsors, our presenting sponsors, Race Tech and Boyson, as well as Prox, X-Brand, Guts Racing, FXR, 60, Luxon, Motul, WUSA. I want to thank Galdi for coming on, Jess, Jess Pettis, Dylan Wright, Ryder McNabb. For anybody that listens, that listening that thinks we're a bunch of idiots tonight, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh Next week's show is a little in question. We're trying to figure that out. I'll be at Club MX. Uh, actually, Wednesday night. Yes, uh, I might be traveling Wednesday night. So, we got to figure that out. We haven't really talked about how we're going to do next week. Might do some pre recording Mel said he just tried to yeah. call. Yeah, my phone's... Um, all right, well, let's see. I, it's on Do Not Disturb because I'm doing a show. Let's see if we can get him on. Uh, 
Hang tight, everybody. Hold on one yep, minute. Yep, yep. Michael Lindsay tonight. We'll have him brought to you by FXR. Uh, I believe Michael's on the Jesus phone. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck. I, I'm about to shut this off and go what, listen to the MXGP pod. Jesus, you two are killing me tonight. <laughs> Why, Ken Bob? Hey, yeah. is racing. There is an entry list on our website. Ken Roxon is racing. All day. The entry list is precise. It's not suggestions. Ken Roxon, eighth. Yeah, you could have told me that. Uh, I was relying off of you on that one. Man, sorry. Can I, okay, then I I'm gonna I'm the... gonna change my th- my my uh, <laughs> picks to my SD picks to Rocks and third. Okay, so, uh, all right. Uh, ML, anything else you got? You have to say tonight, <laughs> sir. Uh, okay. Um, let's see what's unique about. Okay, so they had to pull all the way to 45th in the 450 class and 48th in the 250 class to fill the LCQs. So you get a spot. Uh, you get a spot. Uh, you get a spot. Yeah, everybody got a spot. They were calling rider. Most of the riders they called I haven't even ridden Supercross, so they're like, "What?" No, I wonder I can't if that, I wonder if that's the the phone I missed. I missed a phone call earlier from the East yeah. Coast. I wonder <laughs> if they were needing needing somebody else. <laughs> yeah, they, it was between you and uh, Devin Simonson there in the 450 class. Yeah, uh, Simonson has better hair now, so. He, he can have it. Yeah, uh, they did that. So a little bit different format. So 450s, they're going to pull three from the LCQ because without Tomac Racing, they need three riders to make a full field. Um, for 250s, though, they're going to pull four riders from the LCQ because we're missing Jet because he's racing a 450, and we're missing Chance Hymas from injury from the, the seated list. So yeah. that also might be subject to change. Let's say at <laughs> round one, let's say round one, somebody that's seated gets hurt. That means at round two, we're going to have to take an extra rider from the LCQ. Um, if riders get hurt in the LCQ, you're getting a call, Jamie. I'm getting a call. <laughs> Scotty's getting a call. I'll be Everybody's in, getting a call. I'll be in Charlotte with a KX 450 in the back of my truck. If they <laughs> right. need me, you'll have the gear and everything. Yeah. We're putting you in, man. Did you get lapped before they even dropped the gate? <laughs> you know, I would never leave the gate. So, look, yeah. I'm going to sit at the gate until the checkers wave, and I'm going to roll the checkers and be like, "What I get? What do I get paid?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, they did. Uh, they did do a press conference today, though. They had everybody. It was kind of more like the broadcast team, but of course, we have James and Ricky on for that. Um, one thing I found interesting is, oh shit, I'm going to over by a cop right now i just got on my phone and there's a cop on a scooter following me so i'll talk to you guys later all right Ooh, this whole show has been a shit show see ya you're, you're welcome <laughs> oh thanks to ml getting a ticket oh my god taking him to jail that could not have gotten any <laughs> going to jail. that's actually you say it's, it's not a good show but it's, it's gonna it's gonna be known man it makes great radio oh wow okay <laughs> all right guys i think we're out of here okay we'll let you know about next week Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. <laughs>